There goes stream. Wow, I haven't posted in like a week and we gain followers. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. You're now listening to the Secret Eyes. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Detroit is definitely in the building via your headphones, stereo on speakers. Man, it feels good to be back in the studio. I swear to God, like, it's been at least over 100 days. Easy. It has been, We so today is the 17th of July? Yes. Uh, our la- It has literally been four months. Our our last day of operations was, were 316. Last time I went this long without doing a show, we didn't have a show. Yeah, and that was and that was a Monday. Like you guys, you guys recorded that night. That, yeah, and we recorded like, after you, <laughs> and we like, shut down it. that night. <laughs> that's it. So he least got that one in before Corona hit. Man, Corona's a hater. I'm just gonna put that out there. I, I don't. You know what? I can't even blame Corona. I blame idiots. No, I blame idiots. I'm <laughs> saying Corona showed up in the first place. Now the what is still here because of idiots. Mm. But Corona showed up in the first place. Corona's a hater. It didn't want to see us live our best life. Um. But no, man, it feels so weird and good at the same time to be back in the studio. Dude, so the, today is the first, so I, I was here last night. So, and for what it's worth, like, you're not in your normal studio. We're no. down here at Detroit Shipping Company yep. where we have our Detroit location. Uh, they did a soft opening last night, and I ran two shows, but laughably they were both via Zoom. So I just ran them. <laughs> Instead of running them from Zoom from my basement bar, I ran them from here. Um, and then uh, and then this morning I had the – like was the first time I've been in studio with other people, like in a studio with, in four months. Right. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if like I'm super excited about it or like if this is an anxiety attack coming on. Like it's one of the it two. It could be both. <laughs> it could be both. You never know. No, and I should mention too, this is like the – so we had a few close calls, I guess you want to call it, like where we thought we were going to do a show. Yep. And then it was like, nope, nope. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we, I think I think we scheduled reopening dates four different times yeah. over the course of this. And then something changed, you know, it, orders got extended and yeah, all that yeah. fun stuff. And, you know, we're just trying to keep everybody safe, man. And that's and that's so that's why Royal Oak isn't open yet. That's, that's why, why I love and hate you. Uh, hey, uh, you know, it's you know, we've got <laughs> so we've got this we've got this location and Northville are both open. Now, because they're single studio locations, and we yeah. can, you know, so it's it's easier to crowd control, it's easier to manage and maintain. Because, man, you've seen, yeah, you know, Royal uh-huh. Oak on a Monday night yeah. when we've got all four studios up oh, and running, boy, and yeah. you got eight it people in each studio, there. and people in the green room waiting to run, and everybody's mm-hmm. standing around talking and having one more drink, and you, dude, this us, th- this ain't, <laughs> dude, it's every, it's this ain't that world anymore. Like we, nah. it, like, yeah. But it's great. But well, well, first of all, uh, you are infringing on my right to do a podcast by not opening the studio. <laughs> I'm gonna go storm the dude. It was you know state capital. You don't understand how agonizing it has been because technically speaking, there was even in the very first order she put out, no. there was an exemption in there for for, yeah. for media production told, companies. Yeah. yeah. And it literally came down to because we were we were up that night of this so after our show like we were mm-hmm. on the phone or you know messenger and all that stuff with you know the guys that run the Northville studios and us and we were even talking to like Ming out in New Jersey you know with his stuff right um, and it literally just came down to dude I couldn't live with myself if like if dude like if Kate got sick. Right or you know, she's got a wedding. You know, well, I know theoretically she's got a wedding in a couple weeks. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, is that still happening? Yeah, um, you know, and dude, I couldn't have lived with myself if if like a host or a guest or you know one of our engineers or something like that got sick or God forbid died, like that. I just that no, like I that that just wasn't gonna be a thing. Um, no, I don't blame you. Yeah, for that. I mean you got to play it safe. Now me on the other hand, you know I get to. Just complain and bitch like everybody else. On hey, Facebook. I you I told you day one you could have run via Zoom like I everybody else was, was, but you know you, had, you had to be a snob. I did. And- <laughs> I did. Because you see what happened. You you, see, you haven't heard the audio yet, but you see what happens when you call yourself trying to do it yourself and it just sounds like shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you listen to I send it to you. Just <laughs> listen. There's a lot of reverb. 
Uh, a lot of reverb. Going we can on. clean a lot of that up. Well, we'll see. But uh, I don't know. That might be one of the lost episodes. Um, but no, I definitely, man. You well, know, well, and apparently you may never be back in Royal Oak again anyway. So. I know. I love this place, man. <laughs> I love the fact that I lived in Detroit my whole life and I'm just not finding out stuff exists. Well, it's, like I said, this is this is two years, li- like literally this is two years old now. Yeah. Um, like all the memories popped up two days ago uh, right. from the grand opening two years ago. Right. Um, and it, dude, it, like I said, the restaurants downstairs kick unholy ass. Oh, no, um, no, 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 the okay. nightlife is funny. Did you walk out back at all? No, nah, I saw them playing volleyball. Oh, I was going to say, you, just, you didn't see the cute little girls playing volleyball out no, there? No, yeah. I, I noticed they weren't socially distancing themselves. Uh, I love how like the first 10 minutes of the show was like catching up. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was, when, I, when I came here, last, I was so I like the last show wrapped up at eight o'clock. I didn't get out of here until like ten because it was like the first day of school. Yeah, it was. Dude, how you been? What's been going on? How you been doing? What have you been doing? All that kind of stuff. So, right. yeah. nah, I'm, man. But trust me when I tell you, the last four months I have been taking notes and jotting down things, knowing full well what I was going to say when I first got back into the studio. And a lot has been going on. I think everybody and their mama knows. You know, what's been going on out there, Black Lives Matter in particular, the brands and how they've responded and or not responded. Um, so, uh, you know, in particular, Nike and Adidas, I love how they thought they just ended racism with a tweet and a retweet. I was, I'm was, i telling you right now, nothing pissed me off more. And I'm glad we started off happy and joyous because... Because shit's about to get real? Because, yeah. Because <laughs> it's about to get... I'm about to... Yeah, I'm about to get real militant. Um... Let me start off with uh, <laughs> let me start off with just introducing the show. So, if, in case you know, because I know it's been a minute, it's been over four months. Yeah. So, in case you don't know what you're listening to, this is the Sneaker Boss Podcast live from the Podcast Detroit Studios. Uh, let me give out the social media. You can follow us on T, or you can follow us on Twitter at TSB underscore Radio. You can follow us on Instagram at the Sneaker Box underscore Radio, and then you can follow us on Facebook by looking up the Sneaker Box radio show page. And make sure to call our show and talk to us on air with your sneaker comments and questions every week from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, by dialing 248, uh, was it 677? Well, I got, well, you know what? What's the studio number? Uh, 248-809-5004. That number, there you go. Because we have the new studio now, so yeah. Um, and if you can't catch us live on air, you can always leave a message on our new voicemail line uh, whether you have any sneaker-related topics that you want to discuss or you want to respond to something we said on the show, uh, feel free to leave us a message by dialing 248-677-1803, and we'll pick out the best messages and address them on a future episode. Um, I'm not even going to get to the Fab Five. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I really want to jump right into some of these things. Uh, and since nobody else is here right as of right now, I'm about to just go ahead and start off on these topics myself. Uh First thing I want to get to, Atmos. Um, and shout out to Kick It With Didi for calling them out. And this is, you know what, let me read the story and then I'll get into my diatribe. So Atmos apologizes for failing the community following uh, racism allegations. An article written by Riley Jones for Soul Collector, Japan-based retailer Atmos, located in New York, has come under fire in recent weeks with allegations of racism, uh, specifically a June 22nd Instagram post by a former employee and friend of the show, Kick It With Didi, details some of the more egregious allegations levied against Atmos. Uh, among, her, among her complaints, Didi alleges that the store, which operates in Harlem, underpaid its black and Latino employees and eventually fired its minority workers and filled the positions with people from overseas. Uh, Didi also alleged that the store was known to backdoor its high-demand sneakers to overseas channels in order to fetch a higher premium. I think backdooring has become the norm now. Like, I'm not even surprised anymore when people say some store is backdooring. I'm almost expecting it. I'm almost, I'm almost surprised when I hear that you don't. Is there an honest store or honest store manager around here? <laughs> they go guru. Ever? I don't know. Like, somebody let me know. Uh... Anyway, Didi also alleged that the store was... Okay, wait, never mind. I read that already. See, this is what happens when you haven't done a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Weeks later... Uh-oh, they're going to cops. Uh-oh. Going after Guru? They, oh, that's what they, <laughs> <laughs> you see it. He did look nervous. That didn't take long. Look, there's Guru. There, look, there's there cops. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Weeks later, Atmos issued a formal response attributed to founder Homeo Haidu Fumi. I'm butchering the name, and honestly, I don't care right now. And the Atmos team, uh, I could read it, but I don't feel like it. But they basically apologized for doing shit they got caught doing. And honestly, I'm past the apologies. I don't care about your apology. I want to see what you're going to do. What are you going to do after the apology? Because so far, everybody's been doing that lately. They've been apologizing and promising to cash or cut checks. And that's fine and dandy. But what are you going to do to undermine the systemic racism and lack of diversity? That's my new favorite word that has come out of uh, the last few months. What's that? Caucasian. Cut Cajun. Caught Cajun. Caught Cajun. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, when you get caught, because first, first there's there, first there's the co- there's the uh, crocodile tears. Yeah, because because you got to cry because yes. that's how that works. Yep. Uh, then there's the apologies. Yep. Uh, then there's the uh, trotting out of the this is my black best friend. <laughs> uh, I I, I, I can't be go. racist. I have a color TV. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm using that one too. <laughs> I'm using that one. <laughs> but no, it, it, it gets fucking frustrating because it's like, okay, you know, it's one to act like you didn't know this stuff was going on, which we all know is bullshit because we've been talking about it for a couple of years. And I know if we've been talking about it, I know you've heard it from the very employees that I've heard it from. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you got employees that have literally formed groups within the company to create some type of camaraderie so that they can go through their bullshit together so they're not alone. So they can face racism or sexism in a group as opposed to as an individual. So it's, it's, it's really annoying to me when I got to sit back and watch these apologies as if, one, they didn't know. Two, as if they're actually going to do anything. And we're going to get into that deeper later because Adidas and Nike are really starting to piss me off. And I've been holding on to this for four months, y'all. So <laughs> if I sound like I'm going on a diatribe, just just no. I've been... It's is, been built up. Yes. But... You know, as far as Atmos, shout out to DD for calling them out. And I think more people need to do that. And in the spirit of that, this makes me look at Sneaker Bar Detroit. Sneaker Bar Detroit, I love them. They gave me a platform in which to write. They gave me a platform in which to you know, uh, build a foundation as far as this podcast. However, those are the bare minimums. Allowing me to post shit on your, po- on your website is the bare minimum. It doesn't cost you anything, and you benefit from it. So... For me to watch them sit back and go through Blackout Tuesday and hashtag Black Lives Matter and all this other shit, I'm the only black person on the website. I was yet. like, how's how? Yeah, that how's that? And yet, yeah. And I'm gonna speak to some specific things. One, when I first got to Sneaker Bar Detroit, right? Everybody was just doing cut and paste. Now, anybody that's written for a blog, you know how this goes. The brands will send you an email telling you what shoe they got coming out, and they want you to, you know, obviously post about it and whatnot. Up until that point, we were just cut, copying and pasting. Copying and pasting what they sent us. So basically what a lot of media outlets are yeah, these days. They, that's they, all it is. Yeah, nobody actually writes anything. It's all just copying and pasting yeah. press releases. Yeah. And I take pride in what I write. If anybody can go check anything I've written, you'll, you can tell. Even the st- stuff I've done in promotion of – a particular product, I've taken the time to write it out. Because, one, I'm not going to write a uh, post. I guess I was so distracted. I'm t- I'm- <laughs> that's that's the dark side. <laughs> of, <I> mean- <laughs> There's windows in the studio. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not yeah, used we, to it. Yeah, so we've got, yeah, they're, they're, so we're, yeah, for those that don't know, so Detroit Shipping Company is literally an entire plaza built out of shipping containers. Yes. Um, and so we are in a studio built out in a shipping container. There are windows on the front that look out on the street, so you get to see everybody walking up and coming up and all yep. that stuff. And I keep looking over to the side. And then there's another window. You know, there's the window and the door that look down in the courtyard. Right behind me, I'm I'm sitting at the engineer spot. Yep. I actually there's a the entire wall is just glass. I'm glad y'all put the things. I, I had to put the things yeah. there because this place <laughs> turns into a fish tank. Like after people start having a few drinks, yep. you, it turns into a fishbowl. People, like, right? Yeah. Yep. I got it. <laughs> but Sneaky Bar Detroit, like I love them, but at the same time, man, like everybody getting it. Everybody mm-hmm. getting it. Like I can't call out a Nike or an Adidas or all these other companies and not call out the company that I know firsthand what's going on. But going back to my point is when I first got here, the YouTube channel wasn't shit. They, I think they had a couple of videos. There goes Guru right there. 
they had a couple of videos where we were doing some stuff. Um, I think they had done some stuff with Ty Hopkins that really didn't attribute to anything. And so, obviously, you know, and I asked them, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with this channel? Well, you know, they wanted to battle the likes of a complex, you know, and all these other bigger sneaker blogs. Okay, well, cool. So the bare minimum of a sneaker blog is what? Release dates and review videos. That's the bare minimum. What up, Guru? What's going on, man? You right? Yeah. So. Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's the bare minimum. That's the bare minimum. And so in my attempt, and Guru can attribute to this, we would do videos. And we did them at DTLR. We did them at No Joe Kicks. Uh, we, I've done some at Puffer Reds. Um, try, you know, and I'm driving all over the place. I'm not asking for anything. I'm just doing it strictly for the love of it because I love what I do. I love sneakers. And I'm coming out of pocket to pay a cameraman to do these videos. Now I'm going to tell you why that pissed me off later. Just keep that in mind. Later, the podcast, right? I got to argue. Now, mind you, it's three of us. I'm not going to say their names, but just know it's three of us at Sneaker Bar Detroit. There's the two owners and then there's me. And a lot of people, it's funny when we go out of town, people think I'm the owner because I'm out here in these streets putting in work. But anyway, long story short, is I'm out here putting in work, doing the grassroots effort, trying to put the podcast on, trying to put Sneaker Bar Detroit on, and just trying to, you know, Meeting people, shaking hands, and kissing babies go a long way. A long way. And that's what I'm doing. Like I said, to the point where people actually thought I own Sneaker Bar Detroit. Because they saw my face. You don't see the other two people. But yet, here I, here I go, got to argue with people. And mind you, one of these owners don't even like shoes like that. He might have, like, four pair. <laughs> like, literally. Like, and so I got to argue with this person about... Like, I have more shoes than that. See, that, that's my point. <laughs> and I got to argue with this person about... What's hot? I got to argue with this person about good ideas as far as sneaker content. I got to argue with this person. I remember this same person didn't think we should do the podcast. Not only that, you shouldn't do a two-hour podcast. <laughs> We've been doing a show for five years now. Thank you very much. Went to London to do a show. Thank you very much. Went to Nike. Thank you very much. Oh, and let me, speaking of that. <clears throat> It got to the point where the brand started coming straight to me, not even to Sneaker Bar Detroit. Now, mind you, Sneaker Bar Detroit is the bigger blog. They got a lot of followers and all that good stuff, right? But a lot of that has to do with the way they set themselves up on Google. So when you look up a shoe, they're one of the first things that you see. And they do a pretty good job of refreshing their front page on the website. So there's that. But but beyond that, the brands were reaching out. Like when Reebok asked me to come out there, they asked Caesar to come out there. They ain't asked Sneaker Bar Detroit to come out there. Nike. That wasn't a sneaker party trade thing. That was a Caesar thing. So, in light of that, we have our conversation with a particular NBA player who thought about buying the brand. Come to find out, these motherfuckers making 37000 a month. Now, here's the kicker with that. I just told you that I was coming out of pocket to do YouTube videos for them. Right. To build their channel. Not my channel, their channel, right? Because they want to be, like, complex. I remember, uh, what was it, 2014, 2015? I forgot who. They did a, somebody did a list. Hey, it's, it, dude, it's easy to make money when you're spending other people's money. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. But I remember they did a list. Somebody did a list of the top 25 blogs and sneakers. We were number 19. Everybody's high-fiving. Now, mind you, there's only three of us, so when I say everybody, the other two. But everybody's high-fiving, celebrating being number 19. My first question was, how can we get 18 or higher? Yep. Right? Oh no, we should just they they were so happy to settle with nineteen. And I, that that infuriates me because I want to be number one. Just happy to be nominated by Yeah, I'm like, nah, <laughs> I wanna win. So needless to say, here I am coming out of pocket for y'all. I'm not asking for anything. I'm doing a podcast initially out of pocket. No, well they did they did give us five G's for five months to start off. I'm not going I gotta tell the truth. But that was back in twenty fourteen. Right. Since then, they ain't did shit. That's six years ago, bro. Right? Do the math on that. On top of that, they ain't promoting us. Go back, go on their page. You don't see shit about the podcast. They loved it when we. Now nah, I'm okay. Let me let me let me do this in sequence. So we had to meet with the NBA player. Not only did I find out they're making thirty seven thousand dollars a month, and I ain't getting shit from it. Not only that, I'm coming out of pocket to help these motherfuckers build their shit. On top of that, they're taking all the credit. 
Not one time did they mention my contributions. I'm sitting there like, I'm trying to be cool because I ain't trying to like sabotage this meeting, right? Because I figured this NBA player gets right. the gets the website. I can I can speak my piece then. But anyway, not only that, but then it made me think of there was an instance where so there's this African American summit that they do every year. Dwayne Edwards and all the African American big names within the industry meet to talk about the issues. I missed the first one, and I told them. The second one I got to go to, and I stressed to them the importance of that meeting and how big that was. They said, yeah, cool, we got you. These motherfuckers gave me $400. Mind you, the ticket is $500 plus and some change, and that's just for the ticket. I don't cover the hotel room. Y'all making $37,000, and y'all going to give me $400? Come on, man, and that's a month. So moving forward from there, all of a sudden, they got a problem with the way we talk about well, how we do the podcast. Because now, it's cool when we can talk shit about Nike. It's cool when we talk shit about Adidas. But now we're talking shit about StockX. Well, they have a partnership with StockX. So, StockX, they try to get at me by, you know, oh, well, you know, you got friends that work here. Oh, okay. So? Yeah. Don't well, do dumb shit. Well, that's the, <laughs> that's what I, that was exactly my response. So, who? Once they couldn't get to me that way, and then they go to Sneaker Bar Detroit. And i never forget, I got a meeting. We got to talk about the podcast. We got to talk about the podcast, folks. Well. well, certain brands don't like the way you talk. Well, who are these brands? Because I know pretty much at least a few people at like every brand. Mm-hmm. So I would love to know where this brand is. Now, mind you, this particular person has no problem in any other instance throwing out his evidence or facts when he thinks he's right. However, he was reluctant to tell me who this brand was. So I had to do the math myself. Figured out it was StockX because they have a partnership. If you notice, whenever they do a release or a post about an upcoming release, there's a link that sends you to StockX. So now all of a sudden they got an issue with the podcast because StockX got an issue because we called them out and they bullshit. We weren't wrong. You know why we weren't wrong? You know why StockX couldn't? If StockX, if we made up some shit, they could sue us. Yep. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, for defamation and hold us liable for some shit. They can't. You know why? Because everything we said was true. If you mm-hmm. notice, anything I say on the show, I started off with in an article written by so-and-so mm-hmm. for so-and-so because I want you to know my sources. You can go check it out yourself. As a matter of fact, I'm just naming one source. And like any other journalist, I have at least three. Mm-hmm. So pull that card if you want to. Long story short, love Sneaker Bird Detroit. Like I said, they gave me a platform to start off, but let's be honest, that's the bare minimum. The bare minimum to post something on, on your website. It don't cost you nothing to post my article on your website. Right. It don't cost you nothing to post the podcast on the website. You benefit from that because people that listen to, because people tune in to listen to the podcast, they might go through the website. Mm-hmm. People want to read my article, they go through the website. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a little frustrating to not only, you know, it'd be one thing if y'all wasn't sharing the wealth, but at least gave me my due. Mm-hmm. But I got to sit in a meeting talking about your connections, the connections I got you. As a matter of fact, immediately after that meeting with that NBA player, that same person reached over to me asking me, for, hey, can you reach out to your connect at Nike so we can get better pictures of the shoe? I thought you had connections. You just sat here and told this <laughs> NBA player that you had all these connections, and now you're going, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when I see y'all post Black Lives Matter, does it really? You got one black person. It ain't like you got like a whole squad of black people on your. You got one black right. person. You can't even take care of that one person. That one. And then y'all wonder why I don't write no more. Y'all well, want- li- black lives matter, but not black paychecks. That's, yes. That's yeah. That, that. Why well, you don't post nothing on YouTube no more? That's why. Like, why am I going to? Yeah. Why am I going to post something on your YouTube channel or write something for your for your website? Why? Why am I going to bother? I still do the podcast because the podcast is mine. That's my baby. That's my creation. So, of course, I'm going to always take care of that. But that's it. So, you know what I'm saying? I would just prefer, if y'all not really about that life, and this goes for any brand, Atmos, Sneaker Bar Detroit, Nike Adidas, if you're not really about that life, then just say it. Spare us the platitudes. Spare us the bullshit, the rhetoric. Spare us all that. You don't need to, like, change the header photo on your Facebook page no, to a fist. I don't need your fist, tweets or your retweets and, and you your don't emojis. Need, yeah. I don't need that shit. Guru, I know you got something to say. <laughs> I don't got nothing to say because, I mean, I've been saying this is the Grapes brand deal. That's when the math didn't add up then. So that large of a deal that ran out that quickly. And you you kind of was like, maybe you did or maybe you know, I was just like, that's kind of Was high. I not giving them the benefit of a doubt? I've been giving them the benefit of a doubt for five years. 
Five yeah. years. So I, you know what I'm saying? Like, but it gets to a point where I have to look at myself and I gotta be like, wait a minute, I'm calling out Nike for not treating their employees right. I'm calling out Adidas for not treating their employees right. But I'm gonna sit here and cover you and you not treat me right. right. I'm one black person. Don't talk, do not post it about black lives if you don't care about black lives. I don't wanna hear it. I mean, most companies don't. I mean, they're doing it a trend. It's, it's I know it's a, a trend stunt. right now, but that's it's the point, though. PR stunt, and I know some people might listen to the show and be like, look, man, we already talked about I didn't talk about this because this is our first show since the pandemic. So this is my first time addressing any of this shit. And you best believe I'm going to address this. And the reason I'm going to keep going on about it is because, like I said, a lot of these brands have come out and said, hey, you know, we – we know we haven't lived up to our responsibility, and we're going to donate this money and all this other shit. If you notice, anytime a rich person gets in trouble, what they do? Cut a check. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, That's nice. I'm not going to sit there and, and, and look down on that too much because that can help somebody. That can help some causes. However. But it perpetuates them being wrong, knowing what they can get away with. Yeah, they know they can get away with it. I cut you that check. Like, what yeah. you mad about? Like, I, nah, like, we still mad because you still I, treating your employees like shit. I.e., Agent Orange down here yes. in 1600 Pennsylvania. Yep. <laughs> so I, I just, you know, and I think my whole point is, too, is to say we need to start holding these brands accountable, right? We were doing that for a minute. This is why they came out to say the stuff they th- that they said. We need to continue to hold them accountable to make sure that they live up to the things they said because what's going to happen is, and you're starting to see it already, and I've already heard a few employees from both Adidas and Nike say this, is that you can already tell eternally that the momentum has definitely shifted. They're not as enthusiastic about those things as they were because the news cycle has moved on. People aren't paying as much attention to it because now you got all these other things. God forbid when the NBA starts back up, people definitely not going to be paying attention to this shit no more because there's going to be other things to talk about. We need to keep these brands accountable. Do not let them off the hook. I mean, for what it's worth, this is nothing new, and and this isn't even the oldest example. This is just the one that keeps popping back in my head. Dude, Public Enemy released Shut Them Down Mm -hmm. in 91. And and, and in there, I like Nike, but wait a minute. The hood supports, so put some money in it. I mean, it's that's 91. That's crazy that he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's... Shout out to you, by the way. <laughs> no, I, that's that's ridiculous. I feel like I gotta quote somebody now. But no, <laughs> I mean I I know I'm the whitest guy you know, but I'm not the whitest guy you know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best quote ever. But no, it, it's 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 fucking frustrating. Like I said, like forgive me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know people are probably tuning in because they want to hear some funny sneaker shit. They want to hear some cool funny. You know, let's talk about, you know, what's the ugliest release of the week and all this other stuff. There's a time and place for that. We do that, you know what I'm saying? But, like, there's other shows, and that's kind of, I've been annoyed by that, too. I feel like other shows have kind of dropped the ball on these kind of topics when it comes to letting these brands off the hook and holding them accountable and all this other shit. Like, everybody wants to do a sneaker battle and all this other shit. That's cool. I'm not going to call out any particular show because it's not about attacking any one particular show. I'm just saying... The more attention, the bigger the spotlight we put on them, the more we bring about change. If it's just us talking about this stuff, it's only going to do so much. If there's like, it's like singing by yourself and singing with a choir. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The sound carries a lot further when you have a choir. You know what I'm saying? But if it's just one person singing a solo, it's only that music is only going to go so far. And I need everybody to, like, really be vigilant, man. Like, really, like, seriously, like, we can do all the other sneaker stuff, too. Like, I'm not saying stop. I'm just saying, like, yo, strike a balance. That's all I'm saying. Like, do not let these brands out the hood. Don't let the news cycle go by and let these dudes get away with not holding up. This is shit they said. They said they were going to change. Hold them accountable to the shit they said. That's all I'm saying. They want to sell to us. They want to use us to market their product, but then they don't want to, like, give us a voice. Mm-hmm. They want to give us a seat at the table. What type of shit is that? At some point, we got to, look, if we really about that life, we got to be about it. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's a, a lot of moving parts that come along with that. One, yeah. 
not only the listeners, not only even the influencers, but also the general public has to do their due diligence and protesting or, you know what, we gonna sh- this month we're not buying no Mikey releases. Like, that's going to catch their attention because that is the only thing they receive is dollar drops because, you know why, they're publicly traded. And their shareholders saying, hey, why is this looking like A month ain't even long enough. Like, remember yes, when they did that, what was that, a couple weeks ago, it was like they weren't going to buy anything on Monday. What the brands do? What did, what did Nike do? They moved the release to Tuesday. So a boycott one day ain't gonna do yeah, shit. You just gotta you gotta really put them to the fire, and we all gotta sit on board because a lot of times people flip sides and be like, "Oh well, we can we it's not that bad, guys." Or see, they did. It's sometimes it's sad that some of us can be bought on our side. We're the only culture that's done that. You can't get nobody else from the Asian community, the Jewish community. Caucasian can to turn on each other. We're the only one that does it. Like, right? I'm I mean, not even trying to. I'm trying to bring us. I'm like, I'm talking about far as fighting for the cause. Oh yeah, a wall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh well, you no, know, yeah. the Django type situation. Right, and, so, I, and so. I, I don't want to sound biased because there's been some people out there too that's been like overly biased. Like, if you post a shoe, you're not serious about the. You can do both. That's all I'm saying. Strike, like I said earlier, strike a balance. Nobody's saying you gotta like not have fun with sneakers. Nobody's saying you can't post your shoes and post your fit. I've been doing it. But we still got stuff to do out here. Now, you know, I know I haven't posted all the other stuff because that's kind of that's ongoing, so I can't really speak on the things that I'm working on right now. But I've talked to a few brands about actually being there to talk to them internally about diversity and race because they know this is something that I and the show have been talking about for a couple of years now. We've been talking about the issues at Adidas and how they've been treating their employees. We talked about the issues at Nike and the sexism. And, you know, Under Armour, boy, <laughs> you know, the party's there. So, you know, I we've been talking about those things. So they, we already have a relationship, and they already – we've on, we've been on their radar as far as that's concerned. So, you know, I've been working in that regard behind the scenes. I can't say anything specifically other than that because, like I said, it's still ongoing, and so and it's still being worked out. Right now the coronavirus is kind of fucking everything up because, you know, people ain't even back to campus yet. You know, a lot of these companies. So you can't really plan a meeting when you don't know when everything is going to be lifted, you know, so. Well, or, hey, yeah, they're in the office next week, but the week after, everything's going to be shut, shut down, down again. again. Yep. Right. So it's, it's very it, it's very hard to plan anything uh, short term or long term, you know. But just know that we, at least I have been in, in communication with some stuff. And like I said, it's all about bringing awareness to these issues because look I don't have to deal with this stuff Guru don't have to deal with this stuff you know like as far as working within these brands you know we speak like a lot of people use things like this to bring attention to themselves I'm trying to bring attention to these issues because they have to deal with it they have to live with it and I try I try to speak for them in a way that invokes change and so but it requires all of us though it requires all of us like I said to be vigilant and to and also the the athletes who are you know sponsored by this brand who are part of this brand they got yeah. they got to speak up too because that's going to hold volume because that's the person who's selling that product on you know what I'm saying yeah. who's wearing the shoe so if 100 if LeBron or Paul George say hey we ain't like what's going on that campus then that's going to get them to shaking and moving because without them they can't sell that product so 100. so speaking of harassment not specifically sneaker related but I was I've been waiting for this shoe to drop. Since Uh-oh. about two o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> what shoe was that? Uh, so the Redskins apparently hired uh, the top sexual harassment firm in in the D.C. area at, at around two o'clock, and nobody knew why. Mm. Uh, yep, news just broke. Uh, Fifteen women filing lawsuits. Oh, they finally broke the story. <laughs> that story has been like lingering for two days now. <laughs> they finally broke that story. I, I, I can't wait. Was it the Washington Post that dropped that story? Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm definitely gonna catch that. Yeah, if any, <laughs> that Dan Snyder story is gonna be wow. Um, but yeah, uh, U- USA Today, USA Today. Okay, cool. I'm definitely gonna catch that. But um, another news. Well, we all know you heard about Reebok ending their partnership with CrossFit. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the mm-hmm. CEO, like, I don't even understand that. Like, dude, like in this day and age, why would you? Why would you volunteer that shit? I don't understand what goes into the mind of somebody as a CEO of a company. Even if I think it think might sound, in, they think they're invulnerable. Yeah, it's like no, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm just not gonna say shit. Yep. Nope. They they I think they're invulnerable. It's no. it's I, I've seen it happen 
in my own life, I, I've, I, they just they get a point where their ego go, gets so big that they think they're truly untouchable, and it's crazy. It's ridiculous. I'm like, dude, why would you volunteer? Nobody asked you. Why would you come out and yeah. say? Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I just feel like we live in a day and age where we've allowed because I, I just feel like people because of like you said Trump and other things they just feel like they just got the license to be reckless mm -hmm. like, yo we can just say this stuff and y'all gonna take it yep and you know it's <sighs> bruh uh, 2020 I, I can't hopefully 2021 is the reset we need <laughs> like I, real talk like, I just, dude I this year it's just trash. holy crap 2019 was trash too I thought 2020 was gonna be the reset it, 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 yeah I, <laughs> I got nothing I who who the hell knew Ah man, this is like yo, like I'm straight. Like I, I mean, I'm about to Bill and Ted back to another time somewhere. Well, and it's and it's one of those things where like, I, I, I love the meme that was floating around that basically um, 2020 proves to me that time travel exists. Yeah. Because it's obvious that people keep coming back and trying to fix shit, and it but worse. then they screw up other shit. <laughs> Like the murder hornets, where the hell did the murder hornets go? They disappeared. So somebody time traveled back and got rid of them, but now you got the bubonic plague breaking out in yeah, Colorado. Yeah, like what? <laughs> Super yeah. nightmares on. This is the end times for real. I might go to church this Sunday. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like are churches open? Or like <laughs> uh, they are. I believe they are at twenty five percent capacity. Uh, a lot of them been doing. Uh, they have like a screen outside, and everybody sitting in their car. And you yeah. turn to the room. To turn to up. the radio station. I do like the memes though. It's like you know, it kind of shows all the pastors who are like on TV, like healing people. You know, like yeah. where they at right now? Like, where, like you should be, <laughs> yeah, front and center. This your time to shine, player. Exactly. Bring it up, man. Go. Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah. yeah, but then again, you can't touch nobody. So <laughs> I mean, that's the irony in that. Like, what? you would heal, like the touching people and healing people. But if you but, got that skill, though, like you should be. Like, I know. I'm just saying, people would usually prefer the people, not them, but the people yeah. who would like to go seek it. Don't want to go because of the COVID thing. But I'm not saying that they wouldn't still do right. it. But or I just, I just find it hilarious. It's like, yo, this your time. Like, dog, if there's ever a time for you to use them powers then i don't know because trump probably stop him because he just stripped the cdc of their information so now the hospitals don't send all their covid tests or confirmed tests to the cd they had to send them to dc now uh, so I, now he's really about to control the narrative I boy really, oh boy I I get, how watch, watch how it's gonna go down to zero. Oh man ain't no more coronavirus it's crazy uh yeah, yeah i'm not happy about that like, at how all do you strip how do you the defend CDC, that how do you strip the cdc of even, collecting like that's bro. their like that how do you it's a neutral party that is all these health and actually CDC has actually been not been held to the fire because they've actually for somebody to speak out most about it Fauci and other in the World Health Organization have been kind of speaking for the US the CDC has been back just uh, we ain't gonna say nothing unless we well, ask well they've been kind of neutered by him yeah, though yeah but I'm saying but that's what I'm saying like you guys should have been you should have been uh, if he holding press conferences every day, he they should definitely be holding press conferences at least once a week, updating people. That's what you with. should be doing. Like they, he's actually let them off the hook, and but then again, and because the numbers are rising, he doesn't like that narrative, especially with. It. So now he's. But didn't he say if we didn't test as much, like? Oh yeah. That's well, you know, obvious. and you know, if if you didn't if we didn't have uh, border patrols, uh, our illegal immigration numbers would go down. Exactly. Um, if you would stop testing in schools, uh, less kids would flunk. Uh, I, I mean, it's I, it's just it's pheno it's phenomenal. I, it, the way his brain thinks, it's it's it's, it's just not even so much how his brain thinks. It's how his supporters support that shit, though. Like, that's the part. Oh, dude, nah, that, that doesn't. He it, is dude. who he is at this point, dude. Like, he's I'm a he's surprised. a cult leader. Like he's he's no different than David Koresh. He's no different than Jim Jones. He's no different than. It's it's a it is a cult of personality because and that's that's I, what it is. I think the best quote that I've seen in the midst of one of the Facebook arguments that was going on on my wall was. It's hard to win an argument against a genius. It's impossible to win an argument against an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's very true. This is probably why I don't argue with people no more. Because this is like, yo, like you intent on being dumb, like it's no like why am I gonna waste this time yep, thinking nope. if you're gonna just not think? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be entrenched and you're not thinking. Yep. That's and the and part that's that kills me. Well, so and that and that's the funny thing. Like, there's a show that I really, really enjoy called Adam Ruins Everything. Yeah. Um, and they did an episode uh, about basically when you attack somebody's core beliefs, like when something that they hold very dear. Yeah. Um, when you attack one of their core beliefs, it literally triggers the same part of the brain as if they got punched in the face. 
<laughs> and it triggers that fight or flight response. Um, and then you know, like the and then the two things that and I, and I keep bringing it up because nobody pays attention to it. Um, but like Dunning Kruger effect is a very real thing. The less you know about something, the more you think you know about it. Oh, um, and then confirmation bias. If if it sounds like it agrees with you, you believe it's true. I blame social media too because it used to be a time there was like tears that idiots couldn't get over because mm-hmm. you know you couldn't just get on TV, you couldn't just get on radio. But social media has created an ability. Oh, I still hold AOL entirely accountable. Yeah, because now they can shit. find each other. Oh, and now- when, dude, until AOL started sending out all those damn discs and CDs, you couldn't get on the internet. Like it was hard. <laughs> like only geeks like me were on the internet because yeah. we knew how to get there. So now they found themselves and they created groups and echo chambers. Yeah. Where the thoughts, where they 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 conflate, like you said, confirmation mm-hmm. bias, and when you get enough people to agree with you, you think you're right. I mm-hmm. mean, I, in the words of Joe Budden, he said, "I miss when the internet was a novelty." He said it in one of that songs in life. Yeah, more, no, more. Just, mm-hmm. yeah. the best thing about the internet is you can find anything. The worst thing about the internet, I mean, even with, even about the internet, they was on TV. So, <laughs> well, no, yeah. a lot of them though, like you know, they, they, they was, and we knew who they were. Now I was like. <sighs> Man. Well, and I mean, and that's the other issue is, you know, and, and, you know, when it comes to that, I blame CNN, you know, before CNN created the 24 hour news cycle, yep. they didn't have to start inventing shit to fill up 24, 24 hours, hours a day. And I know we're good. I swear to God, we're gonna get the sneakers. In a second. <laughs> I swear to God. But on that note, like, I swear to God, one of the things I can't stand is when they have a group of pundits and no one is an expert on the actual thing they're arguing about. Like, I remember <laughs> the most egregious one I can remember is they were talking about abortion and Rick Sant. They had Rick Santorum on there. And I'm like, instead of having a medical expert on there to talk about what actually goes on, y'all got Rick Santorum thrown around conjecture and what he thinks happens. It's like, dog, like let's get experts. If we're gonna talk about jail mm-hmm. reform, let's have actual lawyers, judges, mm-hmm. you know, the people that actually work in law enforcement, you know, uh, advocates, you know, for certain groups and whatnot. Let's have them discuss the issue and not just random people just who, talking heads that yeah, look good on camera they gotta get know. airtime because you're paying them yeah you know no that's why i love like whenever somebody posts oh well then, you know here's this youtube video from this doctor that you know disagrees with everything about masks and i'm like okay it took me three seconds to figure out that that doctor <laughs> yes. uh is an optometrist yeah what what do why are you going to an eye doctor for advice Viruses. about infectious diseases? <laughs> like I don't I don't go to a cardiologist if I have severe headaches. No. Like that's not how they you know, I'm I'm not gonna let, you know, a, a proctologist amputate my leg. Right. Like, like, <laughs> you find out he's a vet. Like, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so we we talked about that. I say some of this stuff. Oh, this is great. Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, their employees claim that they weren't paid overtime. Now, okay, I'm gonna just read the story because that in itself is bad. But wait until you hear the history behind it. An article written by Ella Chotrek for Footwear News: Dick Sporting Goods has been hit with the lawsuit filed by several assistant managers who accused the company of violating the Fair Labor Standards Act and state regulations. The workers claim that they were classified as overtime exempt by the company, but were eligible for time and a half under state and federal laws. Yeah, how do you, as a company, say that you're exempt? Like, there's laws in the books for that reason. I mean, like, and as a store manager, unless um, they're contractors. No, as only no, person it's, salaried positions versus yes, salaried versus 1099 position. or independent contractors. But this is what happens usually: is that. You don't work overtime, but man, it became a situation when they had to work overtime, and then they just kind of let them work it, and then not paid, or eventually not paid, and whatever. So that's why exempt means not so much exempt. It was more so like, hey, you're not entitled to work overtime, but if you're gonna do that, you might as well make them salary because as an assistant, uh, it was the point to make the assistant managers work. I mean, the store managers work more. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's what, what it, it is, that's the point of it. You're right. Yeah, so that's what it was, but it's just like. Well, there's only one store manager, maybe two, depending on your volume, but you'd have at least four assistant managers. So if a store manager goes on vacation or goes up to another store, then those other two of those are at least going to have to work more, which is going to put them in overtime. Right. Now, check this out. Dix allegedly required assistant managers to work more than 40 hours per work week without paying them any overtime compensation. So this was like something they did regularly. It wasn't just like once <laughs> or twice. Now, here's the funny part. 
you would think, okay, maybe first time, okay. This ain't the first time this has happened. In 2011, Dick Sporting Goods agreed to pay current and former employees $15 million to settle a class, le- class action <laughs> lawsuit that alleged the company violated overtime law and forced <clears throat> staff to work during breaks without receiving compensation. All right, so you got one strike. And then again in 2015, Dick Sporting Goods settled a similar class action lawsuit filed by assistant manager seeking overtime pay restitution. The company reached an agreement to pay up to $10 million in a settlement fund. That's so crazy because <laughs> now that you say that, when I left my uh, one of my store manager right. positions, my assistant manager said she had got paper in the mail from a lawyer talking about not being paid, compensating for like a certain amount of pay. Yeah. And she was describing it to me. And then I, it was only my assistant managers and to my assistant managers throughout the company. So I'm looking like, that is what looks into that. That's what that is because they probably were doing the same thing because when the DTLR took over Villa, they made the store managers. We were in a contract from the Villa for 45. When mm-hmm. DTLR took over, they made us work 48 but never redid our contract. So I actually made less money because I had to work three more extra hours, but my assistant manager was being paid overtime allegedly. So now her salary goes, even though she's base less than me, with overtime, she's on my heels yeah. with way less accountability. Right. And our bonuses are not that different. So that's why, but come to see now, they had a lawyer. This is 20, I left 2018. So 2019, they had the, that same paperwork and got paid, my assistant right. managers too. So that's a that's an uncommon thing. Why? You're not, you're not going to get over labor with the labor laws you're not so eventually when people get fit up collectively that's when you're in trouble and that's what happens with your class out that's what i'm saying like y- y'all been burnt twice like no like why, why not just pay it because you, you it cost you more money you cost you money in lawyer fees court fees and yep. then paying it just pay the people and just... be done with it and you're a corporation you get a payroll tax yeah like <laughs> why that's what i'm saying like why okay if you've been caught twice and you had to pay what 10 million one time 15 million another so that's 25 mil on top of lawyer fees and all that other stuff, court costs. Why? Why go through the trouble? But I think I know why, though. I think they go through it because they figure, okay, w- intimidation. Like, why, why didn't GM just fix the cars? <laughs> but I think it, it comes down to, like you said, it takes a lot for all of us to get fed up and work together collectively to file a class action lawsuit. So they figure, like, if they can keep you intimidated enough, not to say that they're out there bullying, but if they can intimidate you enough to where you figure, okay, there's nothing I can do as an individual. And then, you know. Well, I mean, and I mean, just think about it from a purely economic perspective. So, okay, twenty five million dollars. Let's so let's say they were screwing like at, like how many employees at the average store? Uh, I'll say about mm, forty five, at least to fifty. Okay, so let's say they only screwed them. Each out of you it know, was assistant manager, so it had to be at least say four. So, four out of store with like they got 200 locations. Let's just say 200, so 800 employees. All right, so you got 800 employees. Uh, let's try to do some math. So, let's say they were, uh, we'll keep math simple five hours a week. Mm-hmm. So, that's 4,000 hours. Uh, times how much they get paid per hour? Uh, so, let's say 14, 13. So, that's what mm, 21. So you got so you got to pay them that time and a half. So, That's so it'd be like seven dollars actually, because they paid them base pay. They just didn't pay them the overtime pay, which would be the extra seven dollars on top of that. So no, the, the, the time, but the time and a half is twenty one an hour. No time and a, yeah, twenty one an hour. But they paid them fourteen. They paid them they fourteen. They just didn't give them the overtime pay. So would the overtime pay be the time and a half? It'll be time. And, that's what I'm saying. They get them time, not the half. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so, they're they're getting their 14, but they're not getting that extra seven, seven bump. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. So, you're looking at, let's say, on a – so, you, every hour they do that, they're, they're making $56,000. So uh, – Over the course of a year. So that's every, oh yeah. So then you figure you've got an average of two. A standard work year is two thousand hours. Uh, so but do, retail different because they got back to school and they got Christmas and they got tax season. Well, let's just go with the oh, basic oh, just, so, so yeah. standard work hour, yeah. standard work year, two thousand hours. Uh, that's one hundred and twelve million dollars. Oh, so they got off. So that's that's some easy basic math. So so they they saved one hundred and twelve million dollars. Uh, it cost them twenty five million dollars. Uh, they netted eighty seven million dollars. So that's why they didn't just pay the people. 
I'm telling you, dog. I, I'm about to do a one man protest. <laughs> like, I, it's so, dog. I wish we didn't do the math just now, cause I, like, I just, I was just getting over my little diet drive. Oh yeah, they've they been, they been getting over it. But a lot of them companies, that's fucked up. But a lot of them companies don't have <laughs> always, genuine always do ownership. Why don't we do? That's my, okay, you know what? Honestly, cause I, I know. And I hate this argument because I know a lot of our laws, especially when it comes to lawsuits and shit like that, is for the company's benefit because they don't want to hurt the companies too much because they're part of the economy and mm-hmm. you know, capitalism and all this other bullshit. So they'll let them get away with that slap on the wrist. Mm-hmm. Like it seems twenty five million says a lot a lot to me, you and the Guru, right? Mm-hmm. Because neither one of us had twenty five million. But that's not hurting them. If they just like you, we just did the math. Like, and that's not even all the hours. We just went with the basic lowest. Le- yeah, assuming yes. they only did. Yeah, that's yeah. So, bruh. Oh, and that's that's one year. By yeah, the that's way. just one year. That's that's one year. By the way, right? And and that's and we combined <laughs> both lawsuits. Mm-hmm. They got fifteen yeah. mil on one, and then ten in the other. So they actually made more. In each case. Because they made $112 million yeah. every year. So they made over $100 million by not paying them the overtime. Uh-huh. And the court system let them get away with it. Yep. By saying, hey, well, we're going to make you pay something. So it looks like you, you want, did something. You want, you want to get really mad? You want to get really mad? Oh, man. So if it's, let's say they pulled that shit for 10 years, <laughs> that's a billion dollars. Bruh. <laughs> and Bruh. they paid out $25 million. I'm throwing a Supreme brick for the next big <laughs> sporting goods I see, bro. I swear to God, yo. Like, that shit. If that don't make you mad, I don't know what will, man. Like, cause once again, this is what I'm talking about. The employers are the ones who are getting fucked. They got families to feed. Mm-hmm. Like, why are we worried about? See, this is the argument. I hate when they make this argument. Well, you know, a company got to, you know, we got to keep the company afloat because people that got jobs, they got to feed their families. Okay, if that's your rationale and reasoning for <clears throat> for for uh, um, catering to this company, is these people need their jobs so they have families to feed. Then make sure those families are getting fed and that they're getting all the money that mm-hmm. they do. You got them working for it. They putting in the work, so why not give them their mm-hmm. due? Like, don't use that argument for one thing in defense of the company and not use that same argument in defense of the employee. But, <laughs> bruh. Oh, man. It's almost one of those things where it's like you finding out how the sausage is made, and it's like you, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like it never, never look back yeah, in the like, kitchen. Never, like never no look more. back in the kitchen. Never. Like, I don't even. You did they social distancing? No. <laughs> no. I hate these windows, man. I hate these windows in the studio. Man. They're so distracting. <laughs> well, yeah, that's definitely, definitely not on that little bar thing. That's definitely. bullshit, dog. Like I swear to God. But like I said, the employers are the ones who have to live with this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because now they got to work and knowing. Well, and if you talk shit about it, you get fired. Right. And, and you lose that, your job. And now that, oh, what's the math on that? So, wait, wait. Okay, so what's the math on that? Let's do the math, do the back of math. So, like, let's say the 10 mil. Yep. 10 million divided by how many employees we say? Mm, what was that? 80,000? Because it's only assistant managers. So yeah, like so it was like what eight thousand? Eight hundred, eight hundred, eight thousand. What was that? Four, four or five times two hundred stores. So it was eight hundred. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's twelve thousand five hundred dollars. And and, and then, oh oh oh, let's not forget uh, the tax. attorney gets their money. Yeah. So before you, anybody else gets, and that's usually a third. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead so and multiply like that. Uh, so that's eighty two fifty. Then tax. Uh, so let's go. Uh, oh, do, do they tax uh, lawsuit winnings? Uh, it can be classified as unearned income depending on how it's structured. Okay. Um, so there you go. So worst case scenario, they got forty nine fifty. So less than five thousand dollars. And they really do like what four or five times that. Mm-hmm. How about they got twenty five million though? No, they got. We added both lawsuits oh. up together. Like one lawsuit got ten, and another lawsuit got fifteen. Mm-hmm. Two different groups of people, so they got what four thousand dollars, even though they're probably owed. Or so all together they got twelve. They probably were like really owed forty eight fifty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then after everything is said and done, they got four thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Think about that. They are owed like forty eight thousand, and then they got four thousand. That is some fucked up math right there. Man, I swear, like I don't even want to do this sneaker shit no more. <laughs> Honestly, let's talk about cartoons. I mean, I've been told you it's, it's the 
it was I said it like two years ago, the sneaker inside the sneaker racism inside uh sneaker racism, but it's racism inside the sneaker community and the industry. Mm-hmm. Like this is nothing oh, but movie. Like Oh man, there was something else. Okay, during the pandemic, God damn, I tell you. Whew. Sneaker store owner is facing federal charges for reselling medical supplies. <laughs> I swear, I, I, I'm Once done. Once a reseller, always a reseller. I'm mo- <laughs> boy. An article written by Victor Dang for a Soul Collector, a sneaker shop owner in New York, is facing federal charges after he was accused of price gouging various medical supplies in the midst of the pandemic. 45-year-old, 45, man. You know well, that. I think it was different when the gas station sounded them, though. <laughs> I mean, the gas station and grocery stores sell medical supplies too. But I guess he was selling them like for like ridiculous prices, though. Like he wasn't just selling them; he was like, I mean, like you said, like reseller prices. I mean, if that's the I case, the then mask, if that's the case, thousand dollars, then the hand sanitizer company should be held accountable too. Because yeah, before they were ninety nine cents, a dollar fifty two fifty now. <laughs> $5 for a but bottle. Is, of this but is that the hand sanitizer company or is that the store selling them? That's a hand sanitizer company. No, because they just like the sneakers, they do them wholesale. But uh, but here's my thing. But if you raise, if I was buying this, selling this to you before for a dollar, you're going to sell it for two, right? Right. Yeah. But if but I'm I selling, But do we know that they're doing that? Because the, yeah, the store is, you're right. Because uh, Menards. Dude, I could, I could still be buying it for a dollar and then selling it for five. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the law of supply and demand. Walmart yeah. Menards got both got yep. caught red handed doing that shit. Yeah. And, and uh, also, too, but I'm pretty sure if you you said that, right? So if, if you say you're. You're a green hand sanitizer, right? Yep. And I'm and I'm a guru store, and you know that I'm selling it above because when you come in there, you see the shelf tag. You're gonna charge me more. So in the beginning, I may get over on you, but once you catch wind and I'm selling it three times above the at cost or retail price, or just the retail of it, you're gonna raise your price too. Uh, yes and no. I mean, that's not usually how that works a lot, just because I mean, because you know, then I mean that. I mean, as a manufacturer, you set the price that you need to sell your shit at in order to keep your crap afloat. Um, you know, and then once and and then okay, great. Like, and everybody has like cost bump up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like especially with the timing on everything, because I feel like a lot of the places that got busted, they were jumping up the prices on inventory they already had. Yeah, yeah, I'm just talking about now, though. Like, yeah. Not, but because my thing is, hand sanitizer was in demand, so which means you're gonna have to have people work more often, which means you're gonna be paying more possibly yep. overtime. So of course you're gonna raise the price of this, and then my, so that's my thing is they well, yeah, totally, totally, totally took. But advantage. that's logical though. What we're talking mm-hmm. about is people that just price gouging just for the sake of price gouging. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. But a lot of this is overpriced. And this is what this guy is doing. <laughs> like I guess we got accused of 45 year old Armardeep Singh. Uh, he's accused of violating the Defense Production Act after he was found stockpiling different forms of personal protective equipment. Oh, yeah, that guy. Yep, yeah, yep. Including face masks, surgical gowns, and hand sanitizer at a Long Island warehouse and have been reselling the items at marked up prices through various websites and storefronts. Yeah, because he was out buying up, like, N95 yeah. masks, like the like the, the shit that hospitals needed the at the time. What the that about? Yeah, like... Yeah, well, right. well, and and to your point, actually, I mean, and the same thing happened with uh, what was it? Two brothers in Tennessee. Yeah, a lot um, of people were doing that at first. That bought like a hundred thousand dollars with a hand sanitizer because they thought they were going to sell it on Amazon. Same thing, you know, they were going to price gouge. That was yeah. their thing, and people, they, nope, so not. Nah, they took some, it. Uh, they donated it. No, it was a it was a lady somewhere. They just like the feds just came and took it. Oh, you and know, I was like, thank you. Like, yep. yeah, you just took that loss. No yep. money back. Um. Yeah. That's so crazy. The feds will come take it, but the government still ain't gave the hospitals more PPE that they need. So you willing to go take it from people selling it because, you, of course, you're not taxing it. They're not paying no sales tax, so you're not getting your cut. But here it is. You're in a position to provide them with what they need, and you don't. <laughs> hey. the, that's the government There's for a certain you, right? administration. It's like, that's yeah. like, that's the, it behooves me for like Not only you. that, but you had the federal government outbidding states. Like, the federal government was getting into a bidding war against individual <laughs> states to get shit. Bruh. So he was he was just terrible. Then he told them in New York and Michigan you couldn't get ventilators, but then sent some to Russia. <laughs> like, but like it's just he sent some of the PPE to China too. Yeah, like it was just, bro, it was just beyond. <laughs> I can't dog. Uh, and he still got people that support him. I can't understand it. Anyway, uh, Amardeep he owns the sneaker and apparel store in New York tent sale. 
out in Plainview, New York. So, yeah, if you live out there, just swing by and say what's up. Uh, <laughs> Armand Deep is currently facing up to one year in prison if he's convicted. I'm pretty sure he's going to get convicted. That's, that's Right now, that's probably the worst crime you could commit right now. Nobody has mm. tolerance for that. What? Unless he pleads out. For what? That overselling that stuff? Yeah. Like, certain... It, <laughs> I'm not saying there's a right time to commit a crime, but there's definitely a wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> like, this would be the wrong time. Yeah, definitely a wrong time to do some shit like that, bro. Sorry. Uh, I really want to get into this because I talked about it earlier, how Nike. So everybody remembers Nike came out and was, oh, Black Lives Matter and all this other shit. And what ended up happening? Adidas retweets it. Mm-hmm. And all was right with the world. Racism has ended. <laughs> 400, years, 400 years of repression gone. Because Adidas and Nike are able to put down their swords long enough to agree that Black Lives Matter, and I and I, I never forget the day they did that, following the people I know that work at those brands on social media, and watching themselves pat each other on the back and high five. And mind you, all white employees, by the way. <laughs> Just like there was a definite. Remember when the OJ verdict was read, and it was a stark contrast to the reaction. Black people were happy, <laughs> white people were mad. It was almost along those lines where it's like white employees that worked at the brands were like, "Yeah, we did it," and black employees was like, "What did you do?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. like, like you didn't do it. You did the very first of all. We should all agree that our lives matter. One, racism is bad. Like that's once again, this goes back to my whole. I guess the theme of the show is bare minimum. Like that's the bare minimum. Racism is bad. That, that shouldn't. Require a was, board meeting. It was. I mean, it's before now to agree though. on that it's as before, a company. It's before. Like you, you know, all of this has been going on. This is no surprise of what black people have done and how you've made money off of. But corporations have made money off of black people and black dollar. Like, and you in return, you give little opportunity or you go to the hood. I think uh, uh, Odell Beckham had that conversation with him, Victor Cruz, Cam Newton, and Ty Gurley. How they would go? He said how they was trying to hold the NFL more accountable because NFL. Like, okay, we're going to go to the hood during the summer and do NFL Play 60. Okay, we're done now. We can go back. I was like, no, nah, you got to really do more. You know what I'm saying? And invest. Like, yes, and truly invest in that because those people, like, we. Basically, it's all photo ops. That's right. all it is. That's all it is. It's photo ops. And what killed me with Nike and Adidas in particular, not to say this doesn't happen in all these brands because it does, but with them in particular, we had just read stories about how Nike was treating their, like, there was at the Oregon Project. Not, so they had a coach that they knew was up to no good, treating his female employees or female athletes like shit, right? Y'all dedicate a building to him. And then in December 2019, there was a protest at Nike headquarters. This just happened in December. Like, it wasn't even a year ago. And then y'all coming out here tweeting talking about Black Lives Matter. Does it? Adidas. Oh, boy. These dudes. We just got through for, like, the what, last year and a half, two years, talking about how y'all been treating y'all black employees? The lack of diversity? The stuff y'all been doing? And you got the nerd to retweet talking about Black Lives? Does it really? Actions speak louder than words. My thing is, if you don't know how to treat us, treat us the same way you treat the LGBTQ community, the same way you treat the Jewish community. Like, just treat us like them. Here's the thing: so if you don't know how to treat, how what do we do? What do you? It's things you don't do to them. It's certain respects you give them. Give us the same. Here's the thing, though, too. Like, so there was a page. It was uh, Black and <clears throat> Nike, and I think it was Women at Nike and LGBTQ and Nike. And basically, those pages were dedicated to employees within those groups airing out or just telling their stories about what they had to go through. And it was all anonymous. I don't think it had anybody's name or anything to it. And then it got shut down today. Now, Nike has come out and said, we ain't had shit to do with that. I, uh, nah, I ain't buying that. <laughs> of the one thing I'll say about Nike is, good or bad, they are, they are quick to get in front of some bad PR. Mm. And... It's hard for me to believe. And I think even the person that ran the page even dropped the gym a few days ago. Like, don't be surprised if this page gets shut down. And then here we are, page got shut down. Now, why I got shut down, I don't know. I can't say it. I'm just saying that Nike does not get the benefit of the doubt from me at all. 
I would not be surprised if we kind of find out that they had a hand in it. I just wouldn't. It would not surprise me. I'm not saying they did. I'm just saying I'm not about to rush and say that they didn't. Nor do I. Nor do I believe them when they say that they didn't. Nah, y'all. Y'all word means absolutely nothing to me right now. I don't care. I don't even believe y'all on release dates. <laughs> like <laughs> y'all be moving those around. I for sure don't believe you when you say, "Hey, no, we ain't doing that." <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Sure, you're not. Uh, but in particular with Adidas, like they did the retweet. And then, like, not even a two, not even like two days later, Sheena Bola Young, shout out to her for War News, drops that bombshell. Like, <laughs> black employees at Adidas, like, yo, like, you ain't living up to that shit. And they was about to stage a protest. And they even uh, handed up a list of demands. Basically, like, what they wanted. And we'll get into that right now, as a matter of fact. Um, hold on. Matter of fact, my man's Eric Armand. Like, he was a part of this. I am. Um, going to send him a text right now i'm gonna say give us about 10 minutes give us about 10 minutes okay so let me go ahead and read this story so uh where am i adidas tweeted against racism but as black employees say that isn't enough an article written by jacob gallagher khadija Safdar and Sharon Turlip. So they doing like group project journalism writings and stuff right now. They do, they take three people to write an article now. Anyway, no shout out to them. I don't want to shit on them too much. Uh, they wrote this article for the Wall Street Journal. In case you want to know, uh, Adidas is facing pressure from employers to do more to confront racism and prom- promote diversity. Following the killing of George Floyd, Adidas, like many brands, took to social media to speak out against racism. Yet, some black employees at the company's U.S. offices say the corporate culture at the brand is far from equitable. Eric Armand, an Adidas footwear designer, said that Adidas' statements don't necessarily align with how anybody feels internally about the things they do to help support black people. Eric then went on to publicly share his story on Instagram when he said a former Adidas co-worker called him a nigger during a trip to the Super Bowl in Miami this past February. The former co-worker refused to respond to Eric's post until he met with Eric in Adidas's HR department. So he's probably just going, you know how that goes. <laughs> Our word versus yours. And historically, <laughs> we've been on the short end of that one. Uh, <laughs> Eric went on to say that Adidas hires black people to con- help it connect with the black consumer. Although in his experience, it's been difficult for black people to advance at Adidas. He said it becomes really evident that they're just kind of there for our, we're just kind of there for our insight and not necessarily for leadership. Adidas, Nike, and Under Armour for years have faced complaints from some employees that they profit from marketing black sports stars and selling sneakers to black communities, but have few people of color or women in their leadership ranks. Neither Adidas's six-person executive team nor a 16-person board of directors includes a black member. None of the 10 executives currently listed on Nike's executive leadership website are people of color. Adidas declined to provide details on the diversity of its broader leadership. Nike said sev- several senior leaders are from underrepresented groups. Now, this goes back to what I was talking about, Nike, and how they're just better at just getting in front of bad PR. And I think they get away with a lot of things, too, is because all these other brands are so bad at it that in comparison, they look good. Like, I don't know what movie that was, but they was talking about, like, how – you know, there's a girl, she looks okay, decent, but she goes out to the club with all her ugly friends. So by comparison, she looks hot. And I think that's happened with Nike. Like, they, one, are good or at least quicker to get in front of bad PR. And mm-hmm. because all, the, like, in particular, the Adidas are so bad at it that it makes Nike look even better than what they really are. And I think a lot of that happens. Um let me see, where am I at? Uh, uh, recently, a group of black Adidas employees sent a presentation called Our State of Emergency to executives calling for the company to increase representation of black and Latino employees to 31% of every level of the organization by the end of 2021. The document also called on the company to give $50 million in global sales a year 
to black U.S. communities and help raise money for nonprofits serving those communities. At an all-employee meeting last August at Reebok's Boston headquarters, Reebok, man, y'all just can't stay out of it, can y'all? Karen Parkin, head of Adidas, Adidas's human resources, said racism was noise that is only discussed in America. Noise. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that she didn't believe the brand had an issue with racism. Explain to me how y'all lost Beyonce again. Now, I know Adidas had a lot to do with it, but y'all didn't help yourselves either. You can't show up with an all-white design team. I mean, if you're incapable and then somebody sabotages you, what you think it's going to be? <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, so you can't blame all of them. <laughs> right. You can't blame that all of them, bro. So I just, that's just, probably the best way to put it. Yes. Yeah, Y'all shut up with, like, what, five white dudes from Boston thinking Beyonce is going to be moved by that? Come on, bro. Like, y'all ain't have a janitor? Nobody? nobody y'all could have y'all dressed the janitor up, put a pencil and pad in his hand like he was a designer and pushed him in the room? Something? I don't know. Like, I, I'm just saying, like, what... <laughs> Y'all did yourselves no favors, bro. Like for you know, for and it's funny that she said it at a Reebok meeting, too. By the way, which I kind of figure like Reebok is just kind of the redhead stepchild of sneaker brands right now. <laughs> they just getting bullied and abused by Adidas. But uh, yeah, she called racism noise that is only <clears throat> talked about in America. And I just, I, if that's your attitude, I can only imagine how you deal with human resource issues. At Adidas and Reebok, like I, it doesn't surprise me one bit that y'all having issues that y'all having. If that's the head of your global human resources, yeah, <laughs> not surprised. Like I'm not surprised by that. I'm just more so upset that it's been allowed to go on. It's 2020. Human resources department should have. It should not be one ethnicity. I, I 100% agree. It should not be one ethnicity. 100% agree. It should not be one ethnicity. It should be more than one. Yeah. It should be one of each. It can be an Indian person, an Asian person, an African American person, a Caucasian person, a Latino person. Yep. And if you need 20 people, you need to have two of each. Like, you need to have that as diversified as possible because if there's a, a, a issue with an African American and a Caucasian person, you don't know their background prior to hiring and you don't know how they really feel. So, look, I, the African-American, know how to handle African-American people and issues, right? Right. And if someone's being said, and if someone, and even, here's the thing, if there's a Caucasian, as a black person says they have an issue with a Caucasian person, right, and say, hey, you know what, this guy who's Latino, I want you to investigate it because there's not a neither a cultural bias with him. Yeah. There's easy to get to the bottom of it. If you put a Caucasian person on it, well, he just, he playing a race car, or you put a black person on it, so they're just trying to gang up on me on racism. But if you put someone who's of a different nationality, that's an immediation, yeah. he has no ties to either one of you, so he's going to see a little bit more clear. You know what I'm saying? Right, but so, diversity is always good, though, because it creates understanding. Yeah, that's what, you, as far as the human resources, you need that there, right? Yeah. You can't. They're going to say, well, we can't do that with the design team because not everybody's qualified for the design or innovation or marketing. But human resources, everybody goes to school at any college for human resources. I know. If you don't have no problem, I know plenty of women or of women of color or people, uh, my friend who has a, a male who's a – people, you can find human resources. Imagine a man just being like, sexism isn't real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, what? Yeah, like, it's come just, on, bro. It's, 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 it's not. I mean, it's, Are you going in with bias? Uh, you know what I'm saying? So how do you expect a fair how do you expect fair treatment if you're the underrepresented person in that room? Just you just can't. Uh let's see what she say. Uh so what she said is according to Aaron I'm about to butcher his name too, Aaron Ture, the manager of fashion footwear collaborations at Reebok, who was at the meeting. This event occurred two months after a New York Times article detailing racial inequalities at Adidas. Like, <laughs> bruh, like, like I said, like, there's never a good time to be an idiot, but there's definitely a bad time to be an idiot. But, um, Adidas said it stands against racism and was deeply saddened by what they're seeing happen in our black community. Man. Okay, yeah, sure you are. Uh, the company said that its executives in North America and its German HQ, I love this part, attended educational sessions to understand and learn how to lead through the aftermath of George Floyd's killing. Bruh, you got to take a class to learn empathy. Exactly. <laughs> like, come on, bruh. Like, this is where I just, oh, uh, man, I, I can't, man. And you know what? I, I, okay, let me not shit on it too much because if that's if you're really trying and you're trying to learn, 
I shouldn't shit on that. I should not shit on people trying to learn. If you don't understand, it's just really hard for me to believe that you don't know. It is. I'm sorry, man. It's 2020, though. Is it like? Does it? Is it really that hard for you to understand how people, black people feel, in this country? Like, is it really? It's not hard. It's just that you don't. Want to, I'll say this: when you have a certain person in the White House pushing his divisiveness, and people who feel like they had to suppress now feel like I can act like this with no consequences because he's acting like that with no consequences. Yeah. And then these people on TV are agreeing with him with no consequences. And yeah. then this guy who owns this company says something blasphemy with no consequences. If it wasn't for George Floyd, people would still be getting fired. That's what it is. The social media reaction is calling them to do damage control. Yeah. And this is why, you know, I hope that the momentum isn't lost. I hope people stay vigilant because it's like, y'all see what happened when everybody was on board and on the same page against racism. You know, it didn't give us all the results we wanted, but it did start some results. And if we want the results that we want, we got to continue. This isn't going to be a quick fix. I mean, shoot, like the bus boycotts alone took over a year. That was just the bus boycotts. That wasn't the whole civil rights movement. This whole civil rights movement took like over a century. Well, not over, I mean, depends on how you want to look at it. But point being, we've been fighting for equality for how long? To think it's going to be a matter of months now that it's going to be over with? Nah, son. Nah. And this is part of the reason why I was kind of upset that the NBA started, like, or trying to start right now. Because, like, to act like it wasn't going to be a distraction is bullshit. It will be. But I will say this, though. Instead of, like, if a woman's going to wear a blouse, right, mm -hmm. that's somewhat revealing, but not trashy, right? Mm -hmm. And you could say, oh, you keep looking at her provocatively, right? And then she feels uncomfortable. And you're like, you know what? You shouldn't wear that then. How about you practice self-control? Mm -hmm. When I see that when the NBA season, yes, it's going to be a distraction, but it's just like, but why can't you watch this for an hour and a half and then go back to living? Because we know. Because we already know. Like, we but got, that's, people, but that's not, we got people wanting to ignore the issue as it is already. Though. That's not, I'm not saying yeah. it's their fault. I'm just saying don't contribute to it. That's all I'm saying. Using your example, I know for damn well there's certain areas I shouldn't go wearing certain things because I know it's going to attract attention, and not the attention I want. Not saying that it's right. Nobody should steal. But I know there's a good chance that I might get robbed if I show up wearing X amount of jewelry and certain shoes. Not saying it's right, but, yo, like you got to be smart about some shit. But my thing is, if they didn't, though, they they would lose their CBA agreement and it goes back. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's moving parts to and, it. I, also, all I'm saying is I just wish. And talking to talking to Langston, he said it was actually is is more on Trump than we realize. Because... Basically, yeah, Trump had a heavy hand in them going back. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, but also, too, I look at it like this, right? Aside from the interior and in, inner dealings, right? If you say you're bracing for a second wave of it, right? Especially mm -hmm. during the flu season. Right. If you finish this out and then you couldn't play for the rest of the year, mm -hmm. at least you got that out the way. And this, if you're going to pick between hooping in the summer versus hooping during flu season, and when they're going to be really traveling, like I under, like I kind of see it from that standpoint. Yes, this is a no matter it's a distraction because sports is that's what the country's built on. But from the, if you go, my thing is using the distraction to say, hey, if I cloud on TV and it's Black Lives Matter on the court or it's posted on a not jerseys, it's, which is the dumbest. I'm sorry. I, and my thing is, it's not it's not about them though. It's no, no, about, I'm not I'm not blaming the players. I'm just saying. That shit right there is so trite, dude. But it's, they do it because American people' attention span is this. That's short. not so gonna do. You know what? Honestly, it, the, first of all, we know what the issues are. It's not about awareness of the issue. It's about sticking with the issue. That's what it's about. People know black. They know Black Lives Matter has been going on. It's been going on for years. I that. People in this country just are like aware Bruce what the issue is. It's like Prince brutality has been going on for years, but now exactly. Silver Hearn has been hitting a hard little home. And I think part of and I, well, we'll say this on the show that got lost, mm -hmm. but I think part of the part of the momentum, part of the wave, I think you had a perfect storm as far as all the protests we saw was because you had the coronavirus, you had people stuck inside the house so much, they had all that energy ready to do something. Now it's, and I just, I've had that conversation like a hundred times so far yeah. that if it weren't for 
Like that's like the one positive that came yes. out of the whole coronavirus thing. I think if that it weren't for that, a lot to do with it. George Floyd would have been another flash in the pan. Would have I, been I a, honestly yep. believe that. I honestly believe that, and so that's why I said take advantage of the momentum because we might not ever get it again. And to like, not um, I think it, that's a problem. If we don't ever get momentum, a civil rights momentum, like that's crazy. That's, it's, it's, it is sad. But we gotta do better of getting momentum instead of waiting for a pandemic. Like, we if that's the case, well, nobody was waiting we for got, it. We're just saying, like, it I just mean, happened. if that's the case, then we gotta give coronavirus credit for giving us a window opportunity to go do our thing for us, like, like far as the. On, on some civil rights type stuff. Come on, man. Like that's how sad is that for us? That like, is sad. So, like, dude, but I mean, think about it. We've been fighting for equality for how long now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, we can go back to like slavery. So, I mean, what? what? But we did. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Martin Luther <laughs> King didn't need the Ebola virus to say, "All right, we got to win. Let's go for it." Like, you got to create. And that's Nobody. Our, but that was a different time. Though. One. Okay. One. Look how long it took them. Like that's what I'm saying. Like look what they had to endure. Look what they had to go through. Exactly. So if they it took them that long, it should take us half the time with more resources, or more up to date, more things in control. Should and are is two different things. Though. That goes back to the people. Rad- I agree. Radically different world. So and here's but here's the other part you got to keep in mind. People by and large have the attention span of a goldfish. That's what I these said. days, yeah. so, and that's that's the issue. Is so yeah, and you can you dude you can already see. It, to it's falling away, yep. and people, it's it's just it's not a thing, and and then you start asking like the deep dark evil political questions or the conspiracy theory questions, like is one of the reasons why certain people, the the Cheeto in chief, um, are pushing so hard for shit to reopen, is because they know that as long as people are idle, they got time on their hands to work on stuff Thank like this. You. And so, but if we get the economy up and moving, and everybody has to go back to work, work. and everybody ha- and everybody's back in now school, now that energy goes somewhere and, else. Oh, and hey, no, don't hey, and that's that's. And my thing, I is was too- just barking at somebody about this last night. No, 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 for, no, no, no. Forget, forget the Black Lives Matter thing. Now, now you got to worry about your kids' lives because we're going to make them go back to school. So, so, that would, so uh, my thing is, so if the NBA didn't start, you still would have had that to worry about because people are going back to work. But There's that other, point is, don't add to it. That's all I'm saying. Don't add to it. It's not. I don't think it's a. That's t- like saying that's the tipping deciding. That's factor. like saying, well, I got stats, so I might as well get shot too. Like but my no, thing, like even, no, even like in basketball, minimize even, the injuries. If, the sports are going to go on because sports is a business. So exactly. Even if, so even if the NBA, the football is going to play, college football players are still catching COVID. They still making them pay. So there's a lot of atrocious leagues. If you're going to come after one, the NFL and the NCAA should be first. Still making kids play and like the kids showing the training camp. Most well, definitely. So I mean, is sports is going to? We can't. Not, we but it's not mutually we, exclusive, though. That's what I'm, I'm saying. saying, it's I'm not, saying but we, that's the sport that we had the most control over. That's what you're saying. But I'm just saying, like, no, the, no, 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 you don't. I'm talking about far as player wise. No, 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 you don't. the NBA? No, no, n- neither. Because, I mean, here's because reality 101, and he, this is why, this is why the, I, I truly, this is why the Lions have sucked for 70 years. This is why they don't care about you and they don't need to. Dude, the Lions are profitable. Before game one ever happens, if you it's show up, ownership, right? If you buy a ticket, great. That's cool. That's gravy. You go buy a twelve, fifteen dollar beer, great. That's gravy. They're profitable thanks to the TV contracts, and the TV contracts aren't going to stop if there's no people in and the stands. And people are still buying their product too, though. And because you know, there's, there's, like, even if the stands are empty, if they're playing the game on the field, they're getting paid. Yeah, that's what the Lions are still like top ten in like merchandise. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was trying to explain to you. Like it was, it's not so. If the players didn't, the, eventually they was gonna be. I'm not blaming. I just said that I'm not blaming the players. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Okay, that's why I was just. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not blaming it's, the players. Oh, okay. They doing what they got. They yeah, doing what they yeah, got. That's do. okay. I was gonna make sure. It wasn't I'm talking player. about like the, I'm talking about the league as a whole. Like oh, Adam okay. Stern and, and I'm not Adam Stern. Adam Silver. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, the, dude, and the, it's still an owners' league. Like we like to act like the players run shit. They don't. The owners well, no, are still because the- at the end of the day, they are like the players are nothing more than a high dollar version of those assistant managers at Dick Sporting what Goods. The players, yes. What the players have learned how to do, they've learned to look for loopholes. So to, to, to right. twist their arm for yeah. They, so that's things. what that's what we mean by that. Of course, the owner had to say because they're paying them, but the players have known how. Okay, I can twist your arm on this to get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or that's what I'm saying. As far as having. And you see some players opting out, which I think is cool. Like I like the fact that they have that option. Yeah, um, they get, they get and, but like I, I just thought with what's going on in the world with the coronavirus, I just felt like yo, just scratch this one, man. That's just my honest opinion. Like, man, if I can live through a year without Comic Cons, like that, that's my football. 
Like as as as, <laughs> as nuts as people are about sports, that's this how I am about my about. cons. Um, and we haven't had a single one this year, and we're not going to have a single one this year. Yeah. Um, you know, because I mean, they're all like the la- There are two more on the radar for this year. Um, and they're both about to announce that, like I know the organizers, and they're both about to announce that they're that they're dropping. Ooh, sticker kind uh, of probably gotta be hurting right now. So and and so again, that's and that's the thing. I mean, it's dude, this like I'm well, sorry, this is just so not long, the year. So. <laughs> yeah, I, so, ooh, they ain't got over for so long. They should be all right. Plus, they probably got some pandemic money. Man, what are they gonna pay them YouTubers with? Well, YouTube is still getting paid well, off YouTubers. So, a lot of people, no, I'm saying a lot of the cons have gone. Well, not, I won't say a lot, but a good chunk of the cons um, have gone virtual, and you've seen like a lot of the like you know celebrity meet and greets and that kind of stuff have been happening via Zoom. Sticker con ain't you that know, far for it. Well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, well, but a, and a lot of the comic cons aren't either. You know, but like right. the ones that are being nimble and shifting and moving are still finding a way to make money. You know, over the course of this nonsense, right. Hold on, I'm about to, uh, I'm about to. You should call in. Um, a oh, real quick shout out. It's a show. Um, more than sneakers, more than sneakers podcast. Uh, I like that show. It kind of decent. I liked it. Um, except the one chick, you know, her fake southern accent. I forgot. Is I sell sneakers. I dreams. I have. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that. What's up, Tay? I'll play you. I just kid. Um, but no, it's a good show. Check them out, Morning Sneakers. Um, I think it's just those two. And they have like a lot of guests. And obviously, what the, you can tell by the title is Morning Sneakers. I mean, honestly, I feel like we could say that about the show because sometimes we just go off the reservation sometimes. But um, I haven't heard yet. One person hit me in DM and complain about it. Uh, huh? You haven't? No. So like, oh, you guys want a two off topic? Like, I, I will forward I, them to you then. I will never. Uh, please <laughs> let me know because I. I will forward them. <laughs> and what's the number again? Two four eight. Uh, eight oh nine five thousand four. Yep. Uh, yeah, she says she's about to call in right now. All right. Uh, anyway, let's get to this story though. Uh, the company said it uh, attended an educational session. Okay, Adidas responded by saying that they recognize they haven't done enough and that they are dedicated to doing more. Adidas says it's close to finalizing their commitments to ensure that people, most importantly the black employees, are heard, supported, and involved in solutions. Yeah, okay. Once again, I believe it when I see it, man. Like I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing about it. Honestly, don't even drop no more press releases. I don't want no other brand to drop no press. I, I don't care about what you say you're about to do. Just do it. Just do it, bro. We'll see it. <laughs> just do it. Like I, I, mean, I hate to sound like I'm pushing Nike slogan, but uh, just, just do it, bro. Like I don't want to hear about what you're about to do, especially when it comes to this. You've been talking that talk for a while now. But in light of everything that's been happening, Adidas is okay, okay. Adidas. I love the ringtone, by the way. It sounds so. I don't know. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's her. What's up? Who's this? Uh, Tay. Nothing, right? Hey, what's going on? This is Guru. Hey, Guru. How you doing? I'm doing great. I just I'm plugged your show, by the way. Did you? After I said, you know, I talked about your fake Southern accent and. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's been working on that for like three years now. I feel like I feel like you want to fight today. Do I? Yeah, party. yeah, I do. We're gonna bring out. Yeah. To, gonna bring, I don't. I'm if, bring out to the red table. Like, if you had listened to this episode from the very start of it, oh, he is cruising for a fight today. I know. He's, I'm on, yeah, he's I'm hoping somebody jumps. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, let's go. What's up? Let's go. All right, bet. Let's let's find something to argue about. I don't know. Jada, Jada Pickett Smith. <laughs> oh yeah, I, 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 <laughs> have, I, I have my, I have my, my, my. The my word of the week tonight. is entanglement. entanglement. <laughs> I have, my, I have my, I have my pin for people for women defending her. Man, no, Tay actually talks with some sense though. Like, I, that's the one thing I give uh, her. Yeah, she was talking crazy. Like, who Tay? Yeah, no, Jada. I, I so, Jada. See, are you so modest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did okay, I do? So, what were your points on it? No, I, I mean, we, well, we kind of talked about it earlier, but it's just like, yo, like, 
That wasn't it, bro. Like basically, I would say it like this: If Will had slept with his daughter's friend, who he knew was vulnerable because she was dealing with types of alcoholism or drugs or whatever, and then tried oh, to if say he was a man, was he got jail. He got a drag. Yeah, entanglement. You know, he was trying to heal himself. It would have been an issue. So. I mean, we I, totally dragged her. I, I he think, totally was wrong. No, that's what I'm saying. You you are one of the few, though. You are one of the few A lot of women were defending her. Yes. I feel like my thing is it's a couple things. One, what? you went after him. He didn't fall in your lap. You went after him. And my thing, I had put this on Twitter. You use a dude for a good time while telling your husband you ain't felt so good in so long. And then you hurt two people at the same time and call it personal healing. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you, exactly. And my thing is, that's what's so disrespectful. It was just like, this man was going through something. He wasn't in his normal comments, but you would call him in a vulnerable emotional state. He told me you like to fix people, so I'm going to fix him while I'm getting, he can fix me. He going, I'm going to get off and get my whoop whoop going. And then for her to sit, for her to sit there and tell Will, I ain't been happy in so long, then why are you still here, baby girl? And I feel like people talking about this their excuse, well, they had an open relationship. We'll use that logic, right? Okay, you do what you do, you do what you do. We just don't get in a relationship, don't catch no feelings. He gave you an inch and you took a mile. That's why he said, no, 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 say what it was. And she said a relationship. Why did you go do that? And Real people quick. looking at August whack, but like. Welcome to the More Than Sneakers podcast. <laughs> but we're we just killing time. I guess he's a guru. Uh, but it's just like, come on, baby girl. You knew what you was wrong with, you wrong with for that. You was wrong for that. And he took it. I guess. Yeah, very wrong. So I'll start from the top. The open relationship thing was, you know, they never comment on their relationship. They haven't for years. Mm -hmm. So the thing about that is, I think they just went with it because both of them cheat. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like in Hollywood, <laughs> if somebody saw something with somebody else, they could just think it was they're just in an open relationship. I'm not thinking anything of it. Mm -hmm. Now, if she would have just cheated with anybody else, it would have been fine. It's just like they cheating on each other. But you took the one little boy, little boy, that your child brought into the family that you and your husband supposedly helped this sick guy. Right. You, you chose him to cheat on your husband with. That's the sick part of this all. And not only did you, you ain't just let him, quote, unquote, Y'all didn't just do y'all thing. You got into a full fledged emotional thing. And people are talking about, well, August week for saying this now. I said, no, 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 no. Because how many times side chicks have got millionaires and booked it? He's been labeled crazy and, and, and vulnerable. He's been labeled that for years now. So, so like. But here's my thing, it, though. It's whether the, or not it's he did it, it's not the big deal. Yeah, here's my thing. But people saying, oh, he weak. A lot of dudes saying he weak. He a weak side dude. No, no, no. Because chicks have made book deals. Kareem Steffens, Nas, Nas' first child's mother, made book deals exposing their relations with other men, married or not. So that's one. Uh, as far as when it comes to them. And then I mean, two. And two. Same thing. Two. Oh it, no, because here's this thing, though. Before that interview. Brought it up. Before that interview, they were never, they were always pictured together. You at the war shows together. You in bed on Instagram together. So he didn't make this public. Your interactions, your social media page made this public. Now, notice how we talked about racism and guru was pretty much nonchalant. Because I, about... I, I already said my piece. <laughs> now, with, now, now, now Will and Jada is all fired up. You're not going to get off say, of me like that. Nah, you, you're not going to charge on, my real black quick. guy. You should have lost the first episode. Real quick. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> come on. I'm going to be. Come real on. You know That's not lost. So you just uh, got to work on the audio. My, my. You know, my mom. You know, we, say, like, we don't, we're not energized about repeating ourselves. But, no, but say, <laughs> go ahead. But say, though, like. I want you to tell. I want you to tell everybody what show, which Jordan you hate the most, and why. Oh, the Retro Eleven. I can understand that. Oh, no, I was, I, wanna... I was, I was like, yeah. wait, Michael Montel. Oh, yeah, no, no, why? Wow. <laughs> okay, I can so, understand why it's like, been watered down. No, that ain't little, her reason. As a little kid, you know that you always have one that you you. Like, you don't like. I don't mm -hmm. like them because they remind me of the little Easter shoes my mom used to put me in. The little patent leather, the flat Easter shoes. I hate those. But when I got into retail, it was like the bane of my existence. So I just, ew, ew, ew. It don't, <laughs> mm -mm, I don't want to try it on. I don't want to see if it looks good. I don't, I don't care about it. Wow. I don't care. Dave, I got a question for you. Is Missouri considered down south? Uh, I, 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 I would. West. 
I would say no. Missouri is a southern state. Thank oh, you. Oh, it's oh. Midwest. Yeah. It's Midwest. No. It's Midwest. No. no. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. It's Midwest. Yeah. N- Thank you. Yeah. No, Missouri's Midwest. a southern state. It's Midwest. Nah. Look at the Midwest. What nah. is Midwest? Nah, it's not southern. It's southern. a gateway to the west. Nah. nah. Gateway to the south. They, ain't Missouri a little higher than Ohio or like eye level? Almost eye level? No, no, no. Don't argue Come on, Ohio, that. So Ohio Guru. South? Guru. Ohio the South. It, it, south of us. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So what are, what are you all um, considered? Midwest. I think it's Midwest. We're Midwest. I think y'all Midwest. I think y'all the with, last no. state that's We're Midwest, Midwest with an East Coast, Coast area Midwest. code. So bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Or East Coast time zone. Yeah. All right, so I'm I'm looking spatially at at this on the map. Um, Missouri is uh, well, because dude, no, you got Iowa and Illinois that are Midwest states, and but they're further north. Like Missouri is like right there with like okay, is Kentucky a southern state? I never considered. I think Tennessee and below is a southern state. So because. What? Tennessee. I feel like Tennessee. Kentucky's a southern state, bro. I feel like I don't feel like Kentucky's a southern state. Oh, what? I don't consider Kentucky. The Kentucky considers himself a good southern state. I mean, they do it because of their belief, but I feel like geographically, not talking about like how you feel. I'm talking about geographically. I ain't talking about how I feel either. I'm I'm okay, but then, but if I follow that, so I make this into a whole conversation. I know, right? Like, <laughs> I know. Like if I follow well, the Mortar Sneakers podcast, <laughs> if if I follow that, like if I follow that line across, like here's here's the problem with that. If you follow that line across, then. Um, yeah, no, no. We went from sneakers, racism, Jada Pickett to <laughs> geography. All right, no, all right. So here's here. You know what? I will give you this because I don't consider Oklahoma a southern state. That's more of a western state. But or but Oklahoma, it's, it's sitting on top of Texas. You talk about you don't consider but that Okla- a southern. But Oklahoma <laughs> is south of Missouri. Come on, seize <laughs> dog, you wild. So, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll give you that it could be debatable, but in my head, Missouri is a southern state. Yes. But it's yeah, I would say it's that. You come yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's western. slaves there. It's sitting on top That's of the only Texas. Thing is, there you go. <laughs> Did Missouri have slaves? Yes. Okay then, southern. What's you know? Better yet, which really? side of the war? Which side did they fight on? Was Missouri a Confederate state or was it a Union state? I mean, the U.S. I mean, the North didn't have much. No, that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that, that that would answer everything. I mean, cause I could say it like this: Yeah, they fought for them, but they could oh, you so geographically you your beliefs uh-huh. made them agree with this. It's like they oh, the Missouri was a border oh, state. God. And sent many men to the army <laughs> armies on both sides. Thank you, oh, thank you. Ain't so it can buddy. be both. So it's a mid southern <laughs> state. Yeah. Mid it's their. Uh, they are bistatual. There you go. Bi- yeah. we'll go with that. <laughs> it ain't bi-statual. the south though. It ain't the south though. That's all that matters. It ain't the south. It's not We're the going south. With that. Not the south. It is a okay. bistatual <laughs> state. Worse now. This is great. Oh, <laughs> I love yep. you, Jay. M- Midwest swing went platinum, so they're not a mid. They're a Midwest state after that. So <laughs> If a million people bought Thank that, you. Okay. that's a Midwest. <laughs> real quick, real quick, just so I can say we talked about sneakers. Um, what are your thoughts on the um, the whole, well, obviously, I think I know what you're going to say, but with the brand's uh, response to Black Lives Matter, and do you think they will stick to their promises? Uh, No. I mean, they did it because they had to say something. Yeah. That was short and sweet. Period. That's it. You are a woman of many words. Uh. (laughs) I mean, it's not a lot to say about it. I mean, you know. No, you were short and sweet. I had a lot to say about it. There's there's another call coming in. Oh, is it? Because that's what, you know. We take both at the same time or no? That's what they're hiring for these days. But, I mean, it's just cool to say something. I mean, theoretically, there are now two people on the line. Is that Eric? Hello. What's going on, man? Yeah, this is Eric. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, Dude, we were kind of talking about, you know, the the race, racism aspect and the lack of diversity of the different brands. For people that are listening and don't know, this is Eric. uh, I'm about to mess up his name now. Eric Amon. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Eric uh, Armand, yeah. Yep. And you do you still are you still at Adidas or no? Uh yeah, I'm still there. Okay. And uh you design for them, right? 
Yeah, I'm a footwear designer at Adidas in football. So I design football cleats. Right, which is why you were at the Super Bowl this past February. Um, no, I, you know, yeah. we just got through reading a story about, <laughs> you know, the response to Adidas's Black Lives Matter post. And yeah. uh, how you guys were like, nah, <laughs> y'all posted that, but y'all ain't really living about that. Y'all ain't about that life. And uh, I was getting yeah, ready to read right. that you guys blew out the HR uh, uh, lady, uh, Karen Parkins. Yeah. You want to speak a little bit more to that? Because yeah, you actually deal with that, that stuff. I'm oh, sorry, you cut out right there. What'd you say? No, I was gonna say like I just kind of wanted you to speak more to that because you were actually there firsthand. You see a lot of this stuff firsthand, and so just wanted you to kind of speak on yeah. the issues there and what yeah you would yeah, like yeah. to see happen. Yeah, man. Like I, I mean, for me personally, um, you know, the, the event that happened at the Super Bowl obviously put me on edge, and I was kind of out of work for a while took some time off i broke my hand so i was even able to really do my job um because so i didn't really tell the full story on that i kind of get the gist of what happened i don't know if you feel comfortable telling that story yeah i could tell it yeah um so i was at the super bowl um obviously this past super bowl in february in miami and i was there with some co-workers um and you know i designed patrick mahomes cleat so we all kind of went out and uh, we're celebrating like the moment. And one of my coworkers, long story short, one of my coworkers got really drunk. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're at the, we're at a bar and the bar kind of cuts him off and kind of starts to kick him out. And you know, I kind of saved this guy from getting bounced. Um, and uh, anyway, so I was kind of saving from that. We're walking back to the hotel. And this is a white guy. He looks at me and he's like, "You know, Eric, you're you're my, you're my you're my nigga." And I was like, "What did you just say to me?" Wow. And uh, he's like, "No, nah, like I didn't mean anything by it, blah blah blah." And I was like, "No, nah, that's not like cool for you to say. Like you don't have permission for me to say it." And he's like, "Well, you, you know, you guys say it all the time. You know, beard and rap songs. Mm. You know, the classic, uh, you know, rebuttals to that." And we kind of got into it. Um, and I ended up like walking away and, uh, he kind of like followed me and he did like another one of my coworkers who kind of got into it at that point. He kind of was standing in between us and he reached over him and, and tried to punch me for like basically saying like, you don't have in my permission to say that to me. And, you know, I think he just was frustrated and kind of knew that it was like a bigger deal right. than he wanted it to be. Um, and so, he so he reached over my other coworker and, and tried to punch me and kind of glanced off me, but he ended up like grabbing my, my shirt and ripping it and ripping my chain off. Um, and, you know, I was like kind of looking around cause there was, uh, I mean, it's Super Bowl weekend, right. And down downtown Miami, I was like, I was just kind of looking around and seeing where the cops were cause there was cops everywhere. Right. And, uh, so he, you know, at that point, I'm just kind of like, you know, this isn't even worth it. Like, I'm not going to be in this, in the middle of something, in the middle of the street right now. So I start walking away, and he, like, follows me for, like, three, four blocks. Um, and he's yelling at me, cussing at me, calling me all these names and whatnot. I keep telling him, you know, don't come, don't touch me again. Like, don't come near me because I will, I will you know, I'll punch you. I'll have to protect myself in this situation. Right. And I make this, I, I make a turn down one of the side streets, and I just turn and look over my shoulder. And I hear these footsteps running at me, and he's coming down the stairs, and uh, kind of with his arms open, like he's gonna tackle me or something. And you know, I just turn and kind of like instinctually, I just you know, throw this punch, and I hit him, and he falls back, and he's like blood everywhere, and he's cussing at me still, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how the night ended. I kind of looked down and saw my hand was broken. And, and what ends up, what ends up happening to, to you in the aftermath of that? What happened to me? Yeah, like with the, I think you had a meeting or something. Yeah, so, so that all happened. 
and they sent me home. Like you know, for the, I was supposed to be there throughout the weekend. And they sent me home. Um, you know, the, the, pending an investigation of sorts. <laughs> so I'm at home for like two weeks, and I don't hear nothing. I don't hear any. I'm not get pulled into HR to give my side of the story. Like nobody really asked. I just sent. I sent when I was in the hospital. I sent like a paragraph long description of what happened. Mind you, I'm like my hands broken, so it's not very long. Right. And uh, so, like two weeks later, they call me into Adidas. Uh, like early morning when nobody's around. It was a day where everyone's like working from home, and they sit me down, and I'm expecting to like give my side of the story or like you know to tell them what happened from my point of view. And they sit me down and just give me this this letter, this uh, final written warning letter, saying you know, you know I didn't live up to my um, my role as a footwear designer. You know I was acting in a violent and threatening manner, and this if this type of thing ever happened again, then I would be fired. Wow. Um. Yeah, and I mean that meeting for me was like a pretty crazy like. I remember this is like how I felt about it. Like my, I had my Apple Watch on, and the alarm started going off, saying my heart rate was too high. It was like 180 beats per minute or something. Right. Um, and I was like, could barely even speak because I was like, honestly, going into that meeting, like, all right, like here's what happened, we'll figure it out. Right. But they just kind of was like, all right, here's your your written warning. So I kind of went off. Um, it was like, you know, how, tell them how horrible it is. How could you give me a warning saying I'm a violent and threatening person when yourself. I had to literally defend myself against this racist dude mm-hmm. uh, who, you know, took it upon himself to make things physical. Um, and I had to protect myself. And how is it that I'm the violent, threatening one? And that's the, the, the way you're painting me. So, yeah, that kind of happened. Um uh, and I, t- and I was just at home, so like, mind you, this is March, um, and I'm home with a broken hand. I had to have actually surgery on my hand and get a couple of pins put into it. Um, so I'm just kind of at home, like, dealing with all this and not knowing what I want to do. And in my mind, I'm like, damn, I can't quit right now. I need this right. insurance for my broken hand. Um, and so I'm kind of sitting on that. And then now, has any other, you know, March or go ahead. I was going to say, has any other brand reached out to you? Like to say like, Hey, you know, if you ever leave Adidas, okay. You're not answer that right now. Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people from a lot of brands and whatnot. And, um, but my, my thing has been, uh, recently is like, I was, you know, so close to quitting i was gonna quit a long for a long time and what caused me to write that letter you know it was kind of one it was that same week that they they put the post up right of like saying you know crossing racism out yeah and everyone else kind of saw the same thing it was like nah you don't get to just say it and try to like get credit for some stuff when shit's not right here um so you know obviously people started speaking out and actually uh Julia Bond, she was another one. She kind of wrote a letter, yeah, and honestly, kind of inspired me. I was like, I can, I should say, I should say this, man. And you know, it was uh, a lot to get to that point to be able to actually put it into words and kind of overcome all those emotions attached to that. But I wrote that letter and posted it, and uh, it, it kind of blew up. I just posted it to my Instagram, and uh, a lot of people forwarded it on and whatnot. Right. So a lot of people hit me up and. Uh, yeah, so so we got a lot of attention and brand's attention where they finally, you know, reached out and at this point in time they you know took took that letter off my record and yeah. uh, you, know, so, you know we everyone's kind of, they kind of got their foot held to the fire to actually make these changes. So that everyone's kind of you know obviously they need. Because my fear is, is that, you know, and I'm glad they somewhat remedied your story or situation my fear is because i i read that you and others collectively uh presented uh what you call the uh our state of emergency to adidas executives and you know yeah exactly it looks like they're 
listening, but my fear is is that as time goes on and people's attention span moves on to other things, that they won't stick to that and they'll revert back to the way things were. And I'm wondering if you've already seen that or are they, are they remaining consistent in their commitment to changing things? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's my biggest fear as well. Like, uh, the reason why we're in this situation, even to begin with, like, last year, was that 2018, uh, there was a New York Times article on this exact same subject, right? Yep, we talked about and, it. And, you know, that caused that caused the brand just to say a lot of things or say what they were going to do to try to fix these, and literally nothing, nothing happened. Hmm. Um, I think everyone had to take this you know, one hour, two hour class or whatever on racism. And it didn't really mean anything. It didn't really account for any change. It didn't even fix anything system systemically. It didn't fix anything. So in my opinion, like they kind of lost out on the benefit of the doubt or the trust to do it. So that's why I think that state emergency also has the, uh, the, the part on there of just being uh, transparent and being held accountable for, for those changes. Right. Uh, because, you know, they, they kind of lost that. that I trust. agree. And the only thing that could ever build that back up is, like, actual change and actions. And I'm not going to give you any credit for saying anything. You have to actually do them. Exactly. Now, I got a question for you, and I'm going to let you go. Yeah. As far as you and others who have to actually work within this industry and deal with those things, like, what can we and – people in the sneaky community on the other side like what can we do to help not only keep attention and keep heat on these brands but to what can we do to help bring about that change so that you guys no longer have to deal with those things at work yeah i think i think the the results of you know this publicity that these brands don't want is the only thing that really got their feet moving and actually making changes um, so I think staying on them and and asking for transparency behind uh, the things that they're claiming. Like, it's easy to say something. It's easy to have a photo shoot. It's yep. easy to try to represent things to a, the public that's not necessarily accurate um, or just try to get credit for things that you're not actually doing. So I think, you know, the community holding them accountable because without the, – the only reason they're making these changes is because they don't. Their brand is – like effectively dead like once people stop respecting the brand like that and it's not on their side their whole <laughs> like that's going to hit their pockets and that's what they don't want so right i think you guys could just seek seek uh and pressure them and seek out uh, you know actually having them talk about and show the results that they're actually doing things differently like ask for you know what does the brand look like one of the big things and big pushes was like, there's no representation of black culture above a certain level at most of these companies. All the board members are generally white men. Yeah. Um, and managers are usually white, uh, European men. And, uh, even if, if that's not the image that they're, they're showing out. So ask for a transparency to see, to see that, uh, and I think also like push to, to actually get into this industry um, you know, we want all this representation and that requires people. And, um, obviously there's a lot of people out here that are interested in shoes and we need their strength in numbers. So once we start taking over, um, and having more representation, there, it's going to be hard to avoid these types of things, uh, from happening later on. Um, because to be honest, if, if I guarantee you, if there was one black person in that room with me, when we, the HR incident happened, yep. they would have, you know, obviously understood where that was coming from, but it wasn't. It was all white men and a white woman who had no wow. um, knowledge or sensitivity or understanding. Or maybe they did. I don't know. And, but either way, they were, uh, you know, there wasn't nobody there to, like, fight for me behind the scenes and well, tell them how wrong this was. Um, well, your global so HR lady says like racism is noise. <laughs> You know, like I, I don't expect too much empathy yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for you or anybody else. But no, I, man, and this is hopefully, you know, our show can provide some of that as far as what you said, like keeping them accountable, and hopefully the community follows suit. 
Um, I'm already seeing Soul Collector posted more mm-hmm. stuff, you know, um, talking about these things, and I hope they stick with it. Um, but no, we definitely gonna be in touch, most mm-hmm. definitely. We re- we've already had a conversation, and we're gonna have many more. But I wanted to just kind of get you on here to kind of like speak to it, because it's one thing sure. for me to talk about it, but to actually have somebody who's dealing with it speak on it, you know, that that speaks volumes. Yeah. And so uh, hopefully. <clears throat> This gets people attention, and hopefully, people like I said, stay vigilant, and st- we, you know, keep these brands accountable yeah, so that they vigilant. don't go stay back. Stay on it. I mean, exactly, and that goes for everything. This is like a worldwide issue right now. Yeah. You know, people are getting complacent and moving on to the next thing. You can't, and yep. once you let up, they're gonna let up. And, exactly. Uh, you know, we got to make this better for the next ones coming into it. They shouldn't have to deal with the same problems. It's our time to kind of pick up the the baton from our our ancestors and move that fight forward. So most definitely, it's either now or never. So we got to do it. One hundred percent. But no, I'm glad you was able to jump on. I know <laughs> it was crazy trying to get you on here, but I'm glad you was yeah, able to jump sure. on here. Uh, once again, this is Eric Armand, designer at Adidas, black designer at Adidas, uh, one of many people who have to deal with the bullshit. At the three stripes, but um, well, thank you for coming yeah. on, man. We definitely gonna bring you back on again. We we definitely want to stay on top Wish of this. Wish you the best, man. Wish you the best. Bounce back. Wish yes. You a better opportunity too. Yeah, for sure. Nobody's gonna keep me down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Puff. Um. All right, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Ty, you still there? She hung up. She hung up. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I think we got two hours in already. Okay. Dave was over there yawning, so it's about time for us to wrap oh, this up. This is not a yawn. Oh, no, no was it? No. You just getting started? I, oh, are you kidding me? I <laughs> had a couple drinks, talked some shit. I'm good. Like, yeah. Because I can go another hour. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, I didn't mean I want to sit here for another uh, hour. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, but um, like I said, I don't want to just keep. Repeat myself, but y'all know what it is, man. So it's good to get back in the studio, um, kind of knock the rust off. I know, you know, we didn't really have the same structure as our normal podcast, uh, but that's fine. Dude, I mean, it's it's going to take time. Yeah, it's... I just wanted to touch. There were things I wanted to talk about and get to, and I know we kind of jumped around. Or I mean, no but... show was different. First takes talking about Nick kind of Nick Cannon comments, like no show who had a normal sequence or normal. It's not. Ta- it's not. I know. Like, I'm just getting ahead of the complaint. The few complaints I know I'm here. I mean, whatever, man. Hey, what were they gonna say? They cut us off. They anyway, cut somebody else and hear the same. Anyway, thing, the same thing. You're saying <laughs> you do a show. Yeah. That that's that's always. Oh, you, oh, you, you do a show. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> man, I know people think it's easy. But uh, but no, I appreciate everybody sticking with us. I know we had a lot of people like where y'all at, like even people from the brands. I was telling Dave this when I walked in. Even right. people from the brands was like, "Where's your show at?" And I'm like, "Oh boy, like we got to get back to it." I again gave you the option. <laughs> just saying, you did. I just don't <laughs> like the audio. I don't like the audio. See, you were doing it wrong. Like like so. I, like I'm not gonna lie. Like the audio is different. Oh, no, we're gonna say it like that. It's different. No, the, you know the audio is different from uh-huh. the shows from the shows that we do via Zoom. It is probably by default about sixty percent uh-huh. of being in studio. Yes. Um, with our post production stuff, we get it close to about eighty. Um, so I'm like to me like that's that, I I can live with that. You like, watch Breaking Bad. Like I need that meth like at ninety six percent. Like I don't need seventy, <laughs> not eighty. I need ninety six percent. Well, you know, shit gets cut before I'm, it hits the streets, dude. That's <laughs> that's how that, that, that shit. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, shout out to Dave. Shout out to Podcast uh, Detroit. Um, shout out. What is this? The warehouse. What is the name? Detroit of it? Shipping Company. Yeah, Detroit Shipping Company. Shout yep. out to them, man. This is great. If you're in Detroit, man, this is definitely a spot to come to. Um, but shout out to our listeners. Like I said, you guys have been supporting us for five years. We were away for four months, and you guys were still riding with us. And so hopefully um, we can get back on this horse and, you know, get back to it. So on that note, this is episode 261, I think. Guru? 261? Uh, yeah, 261.5. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on that note, we're going to leave you guys. We'll see you guys next week, hopefully. We love y'all. We out. Peace.